products that we have available on, on, on the other links box here. And uh, again, this is a pretty violent uh, line of storms that will have embedded circulations. And I, and I don't want to use the term brief tornadoes because that gives the impression that, that they're weak. And, and these are very violent circulations that we're seeing embedded in this line. So, uh, like I said, that's, that's the main major takeaway. Still have that very visible tornado debris signature, um, as you mentioned, to southwest to Cross Keys and Loggy Bayou. That's in northern sections, uh, uh, far northern sections of Natchitoches Parish. And we'll be moving into uh, the Arklamis region. In fact, it looks like we have two different debris signatures, uh, two different confirmed tornadoes, maybe within five miles of one another, uh, just to the west of Highway 71. Again, this is outside of our viewing area, but we'll be moving in uh, shortly and we'll uh, continue to be impacting uh, a lot of the western sections of the Arklamis here in the next uh, hour to hour and a half. So yeah, I'm going to recircle that area of uh, what Jared was just talking about here. Those two uh, separate areas of rotation that we're seeing here, at least on storm velocity, right outside of our area. But again, these storms are moving pretty quickly. So folks in the western areas definitely need to be paying attention. But I'm going to circle just largely um, where those locations are at here. And again, uh, it's where we're right here, kind of where you're seeing those reds and those greens meeting each other. That's where that area of our couple areas of rotation that we're picking up here are occurring. And this is kind of the strongest area that we're seeing right now. We were showing you the, the shear button earlier and again, indicating very violent turning, especially at the surface. So strong winds coming out of the circulation here. Very, very dangerous situation with that storm as it continues to push uh, eastward here. Just want to kind of just briefly zoom back out and uh, there's the tornado warning that we mentioned for Claiborne Parish that has also been extended out. Not as much of a uh, significant area of rotation compared to the ones down south, but nonetheless, so one thing that we need to be definitely paying attention to as we go through uh, the next few hours, especially as our ingredients become better organized for uh, severe weather. So a uh, new tornado warning now has been issued. Uh, this is the one for Bienville, Natchitoches, and Red River Parishes. Uh, that goes until uh, 1030 this 1030, morning. 1030, yeah. Uh, moving east at about 55 miles per hour. A tornado uh, located near Cushada moving, uh, it's about 18 miles east of Mansfield. So it's, uh, again, kind of embedded within that line. Now you have potentially three different tornadoes just boom, 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 kind of lined up one another within the, that line. So again, tornado warning now in effect for those areas as well does include a good chunk of uh, Bienville Parish. So and, and Bienville does, Flavor Parishes look uh, like they'll be impacted soon. And it does seem it's picking up speed as well. Uh, the earlier, um, the, the uh, continuance of that tornado warning was saying that the storm was moving about 40 to 45 miles per hour and now saying it's moving at about 55 miles per hour at this point. So again, any sort of tornado warning that you folks get today, make sure you are taking them very, very seriously. Make sure you're getting into your tornado safe place. You're not going to have a lot of time to get into that place, just considering how fast these storms are moving. So again, you can see these little just bends between the red and the green. That's where multiple velocity couplets are being showing up here on our uh, on our radar here, and that's where we have all of our tornado warnings. So at least it looks like maybe the one that we were watching earlier that was pretty strong is starting to weaken out somewhat, but it's still there nonetheless, but it's still uh, producing violent turning. So again, just uh, be aware of that. And again, we see that other tornado warning that was issued further downstream as this line continues to push further, at least into our neck of the woods. So it looks like we have actually four active tornado warnings that are now just on the extreme western fringes of the Arklamis here as we get to about 1010 this morning here on Easter. So again, if you're getting those tornado warnings, make sure you are getting into your safe place as again the dynamics involved today just uh, are there they're enough even with these line segments you know as opposed to a discrete storm setup you know they're still producing that potential for uh, strong tornadoes today so I'm gonna pull up our shear button again just to see what that looks like here again this is storm relative velocity and it's showing the uh, the winds so uh, our shear button here is a unique product to us and uh, again you can see is showing a lot of shear along these lines. So even if, you know, there has not been a confirmed tornado, damaging straight line winds are certainly going to be an issue with this line. And there's, a, there's still a debris signature with that, that, center, that center tornado uh, warning. So that, that, that uh, middle tornado warning uh, over Red River and... New uh, tornado warning now issued. It looks like this one stretches through more portions of Lincoln Parish. Uh, looks like Arcadia BN, is underneath yeah, it. Bienville, Bossier, Red River, and Webster Parishes. Okay, so 
Yeah, it looks like... Uh, yeah, until 11 a.m. So that, those folks, again, if you're getting these tornado warnings, make sure you're getting into your safe place uh, right now. So again, long, strong line of storms, a lot of shear showing up on this as well. These storms, you're not going to be wanting to mess with them today. Hey, Brian. Had confirmed tornadoes with it and everything. Back off for just a second, and I'm going to um, actually uh, work on uh, taking, and, and this is just a, an in-home thing. Uh, we're going to take down the severe thunderstorm warnings for right now. They, it, it's really jumbling up the, the, the map, and, uh, and we've got a lot going on in one time, so uh, now you're good to, to, to step back on. Uh, to, for folks that are, that are out and about, uh, well, there shouldn't be a whole lot of uh, folks out and about at this point, but uh, we've got a lot of lead time. Uh, you know, we're joining it. This is uh, now quarter after 10 or approaching that in the morning. And uh, so a lot of folks in the eastern parishes uh, from Monroe eastward are going to get a lot of lead time on these storms. So uh, there, here's, here's what we're basically going to tell folks at, at this juncture is with this many tornado warnings and then a lot of discrete activity trying to develop out ahead of it and still a pretty untapped atmosphere out to the uh, northeast and uh, to the east of this main line. Uh, this is your call to action, not necessarily to take shelter uh, in the eastern sections of the Arklamis. If you're under one of these tornado warnings, clearly you need to be in your safe place now. But this is the time to go ahead and prepare and take uh, your necessary uh, preparation precautions for potential warnings later this morning and into the early afternoon. Start charging cell, phone, uh, cell phones and portable devices, your iPads and things like that, laptop computers, anything that uh, if you lose power can, can still keep you informed. But make sure all those things are charged just in the event that you experience a power outage later tonight because again or later today and the reason being is because this leading line while still having those violent embedded spinning uh, vortices mesovortices that have the potential of producing tornadoes we're talking about a, a, a swath of damaging winds that could exceed 70 miles per hour at times as this line moves through so that's one thing that's uh, that's really important to keep in mind is that the, the damaging wind threat is still there and we still have a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings going in with this but just wanted to kind of bring that to some folks attention that there, there's a lot going on right now and uh, really don't want to uh, take away from the fact that there's a lot of damaging wind potential within, the, within this embedded line. Anytime you start seeing these reds and greens uh, so close together, not just in an embedded spin-up tornado, but just that close together in this leading line. It creates a lot of concerns for areas like this right here, which didn't look like much about uh, two radar swipes ago, but now you start seeing the, the these bookend vortices, and I've zoomed in a little too, uh, zoomed out a little too far, so I'll zoom back in. But you see these little bookend vortices on the northern edge of some of these storms, where that line starts kind of outracing uh, other segments in the line, and then you start seeing these little twistings of the winds uh, within the line itself. So that's where, again, we are concerned about a possible uh, tornado developing rather rapidly and then trailing to the north and east. And in fact, is that new? Yeah, new, new, uh, yeah, new warning just came out for Bienville, Claiborne, uh, Lincoln, and Webster Parish until 11 a.m. Okay, so that's the, that's the I, I guess, the same area we just pointed out. Uh, yeah, and it looks like they're, they're adding more parishes as it goes. That's why they keep... Um, you know, issuing it for the same parishes currently. And now they've another, added Lincoln and Webster right now. And here's another one out to the south. Well, actually, I think that was already existing. So we got a pretty messy uh, um, warning map with a lot of these tornado warnings being issued farther downstream moving east. Now you have a call to action for northwestern sections of Lincoln Parish. For folks in Ruston and Grambling, you want to start keeping an eye on these storms. I know a lot of folks, uh, there are a lot of high anxieties still from a year ago in Lincoln Parish, and rightly so. But uh, this line will be moving east. You're going to get a lot of lead time. Interior portion of your home, away from windows and doors, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. We stress this a lot on social media over the last couple of days, but with the ongoing uh, COVID-19 pandemic in the cr in the country, a lot of your, your areas of last refuge, you may be, uh, we, we always tell people, you know, grocery stores and, and gas stations and things like that. Keep in mind the current standards uh, in, in the country, a lot of these areas are either limiting their capacity or they just may be closed. So if you're in north central Louisiana, northeast Louisiana, and you typically leave your home for or uh, a sturdier structure, perhaps you live in, in a mobile home or something like that, and, and you always seek shelter. That's your, your, your game play uh, and your game plan as severe weather unfolds in your area. 
then you want to start thinking even farther in advance uh, to, to find that safety. So again, have that plan, have somewhere to go, and if you can't find shelter in about two or three minutes time in your home, then you need to be able to find it somewhere else and be able to find it quickly. Again, these storms are developing va rather rapidly and these tornado signatures that we're seeing pulse up from time to time are happening in a matter of uh, a couple of minutes. And there's that, uh, again, signature to the south of Sibley. This is, uh, I believe, Highway 371 mm -hmm. uh, that will continue to, and it will cross the highway and then eventually move into northern sections of Bienville Parish, uh, Gibsland, and Arcadia. Now, uh, Again, we expect to kind of stick with you through most of the morning and early afternoon. Um, to be honest with you, there, there shouldn't be a whole lot of... This should be actually a fairly se easy, severe weather event for most of the Arklamists, and here's why. There shouldn't be a whole lot of people out anyway. Uh, we, we should, everybody should be home and, or, or, or limiting their travel as best as possible. Yes, our essential workers are still out, but, uh, but a lot of areas uh, have already been told to stay home. And so this, this should be an easy one for everyone, uh, of course, uh, in terms of preparing. But, if, uh, of course, as the storms get going, that's going to create their own problems as uh, we continue through the rest of the late morning hours. Again, just kind of recapping what we have going on right now there's a the tornado so signature to the southwest of Heflin will be crossing uh, the highway soon and then we'll eventually be approaching this is interstate 20 here in Gibsland Arcadia and this is Menden and Sibley so this is uh, portions of Webster Parish and this is in far southern Webster Parish and we'll be entering the Arklamas shortly Hey Jared go ahead um, I pulled up correlation coefficient for that little signature that you were just talking about and it does look like there might be something coming up on the correlation coefficient part okay. if you want to it's pulled up on links one if you want to uh, Cody yeah if you could go to, to links one real quick now I can't uh, here track I, this, I got it. yeah there it is yeah you can see you can see Brian's pointing it out there with the mouse cursor there to the south of Knowles landing this is highway 371 correct Yes. Okay, and so uh, we're looking for that possible tornado to cross. Uh, we'll, we'll cross 371 probably in the next uh, five to ten minutes, and then uh, we'll pass to generally near into the south of Doverly, and then eventually move into uh, western seg uh, east western sections of uh, Bienville Parish. So again, that's one of many tornado warnings that are in in effect right now uh, across north central and northwestern Louisiana. All right, let's go back over to, to links two, uh, Cody, please. And uh, most of these locations continuing to see uh, at least uh, the, the very strong radar signatures, and to to kind of reset for folks that are just joining. Uh, there are numerous tornado warnings in effect uh, and just now entering the Arklamas region. Uh, a tornado warning active until 1045 for portions of Claiborne Parish. It also includes parts of Webster Parish. The newest tornado warning that does include far northwestern sections of Lincoln Parish, parts of Claiborne and Bienville Parishes. That goes until 11. And then farther southward, another very violent circulation that's moving into portions of Bienville Parish, northern sections of the parish in the next, uh, uh, I would say, 10 to 15 minutes, and then even farther southward than that, a new tornado warning that does include northern sections of Natchitoches Parish. It doesn't technically include any of Wynn Parish, but does include southern sections of Bienville Parish until 11 a.m. as well. So we technically have three different tornado warnings in effect for, par for parts of uh, Bienville Parish, and then again, additional sections of the Arklamas included in some of those tornado warnings too. Uh, so again, that kind of resets uh, the, the area that uh, for folks that are just joining us, what we're dealing with right now. And uh, again, this is a very violent line of thunderstorms that has continued to, to take shape. Uh, for, for locations uh, out ahead of this main line, this main segment, and again, this is kind of your call to action from essentially from El Dorado to Ruston to Winfield. Uh, th those are areas that need to keep an eye on these storms as they continue to progress eastward. Again, damaging winds 70 miles an hour, certainly possible uh, as these continue to move through. Uh, so again, very dangerous situation that will unfold for most of the Arklamas region as we head through the remainder of the afternoon, uh, through the rest of the morning, and through the early afternoon. Lexi? Well, definitely something that we haven't mentioned either is the fact that earlier this morning, around 6 o'clock, uh, most of the western Arklamas was issued under that tornado watch. Now, the eastern Arklamas hasn't been ushered under the, issued under that wash yet, but it very well could be added as the day goes along. So those folks in those western parishes, including us here in Washita Parish, are under that wash. And you can kind of see now we have some active uh, tornado warning stretching across the western portions of uh, the Arklamas. In fact, numerous ones at that. And again, we still have some severe thunderstorm warnings in place. It's just at this time where we're focused on that tornado warnings. Just by seeing, you know, the shear rates and the, the wind speeds that we have been seeing, that's pretty much our main focus at this time. But either way, if you are in a severe 
thunderstorm warning, you still need to kind of act upon that. And so again, th those are the current warnings that we do see right now. Many of them stretching anywhere from 1030 until 11 a.m., but very well could stretch even further as the, uh, the storm system continues to push off towards the east because this is a very fast moving system moving anywhere from 60 to maybe even 70 miles per hour. I do know one storm was seeing a motion of about off towards the east about 55 miles per hour. So even though it's going to be most likely a very quick moving uh, area of thunderstorms, uh, the the potential for strong damaging winds and of course that um, that chance for um, tornadoes is going to be uh, pretty much there as well. Lexi, so. radar confirmed tornado uh, near Heflin. Um, near Heflin, and, okay. And that is a, uh, that's in Webster Parish okay. uh, for folks, family, if you, have, if you have family in Heflin, a confirmed tornado on the ground moving very closely to Heflin in the next uh, minute to minute and a half. Okay, there we go there. Let me go back, let me reset real quick, and then we'll kind of... In fact, it's, it's, it's actually available on Links 1 if we want to bounce over. Yeah, let's that, go ahead and pull that, up on uh, Links 1. Yeah, all right, there we go. You could take that. Uh, the My goodness. Yeah, yeah, so this is our correlation coefficient, and it looks like we might be seeing a little bit of uh, what we call a debris signature, which means that, uh, that there's some possible rotations, some strong winds lofting things up into the air. So that's what this little dot is indicating right here. And usually when you see some of those brighter colors like yellows, greens, and uh, dark blues, that's the possibility of exactly where we're seeing that debris signature. Not so much in the surrounding areas, but you can kind of see who is under the warnings and who is not. Um, either way, so again, if you are in that uh, tornado warning, you need to be acting now. Get to your safe place. Uh, get into the center most part of your home. Stay away from all those windows. And hopefully you guys aren't being out and about, you know, with the stay-at-home order and everything. We do know it's Easter Sunday, but uh, please uh, take this seriously. We have a potentially uh, da dangerous day ahead for us, especially with that strong line of showers and thunderstorms. So yeah, this is what we're most, mostly focusing on right now, that they're having possible rotation there. Uh, with, uh, Jared was just radar indicated confirmed tornado on the ground at this time so again get to your safe places and uh, this is something that we'll continue to watch over the next couple of minutes as it moves closer and further into our viewing area as well so yeah if you're just joining us we're coming up to about 10 30 here this is in webster parish so just on the western fringes here of our uh, viewing area here but nonetheless the storms will be moving into our area soon and what you're seeing here is what we would consider a debris ball this is correlation coefficient it's something that picks up debris or can indicate that debris is being lofted in the atmosphere and uh, it was confirmed as a tornado so again um, we're seeing more of those greens and blues popping up here as it continues to push off so just east of now Highway 371 and uh, moving right over uh, Heflin right now. That signature is getting stronger. But yeah, it's it's picking up. It's becoming way more pronounced. You're seeing some darker blues here as uh, it pushes off towards the east. So definitely a certain uh, very concerning situation with uh, this area of rotation here that has developed because this is one of the most pronounced debris balls that we've seen all day today. So again, it says uh, the storm's moving at about 65 miles per hour. Exactly. So any sort of warnings, especially for those folks in the warning for this particular area of rotation need to be getting into your safe place immediately downstream as this will be heading into Bienville Parish here uh, over the next probably 30 to 45 minutes or so. So uh, we're going to be timing out some stuff here for you. To, can you expect some of the communities impacted? Heflin, which is now Gibsland, 1035 a.m. Uh, Athens at um, 1040. See, so we have Arcadia at 1042 and Simsboro at 1048. So here's kind of a rough timeline on when you can expect this area of rotation to get into your vicinity and uh, to be impacting your area. Yeah, Gibsland, Gibsland, Arcadia, we're giving you 10 to 20 minutes lead time on this. That's a lot of lead time to get to your safe place. So, so go and go there now. Yes, this is now. Now is the time to act, especially for those communities that you're seeing. We have that timeline displayed here. Again, what we're showing you here, it's a, our correlation coefficient product, and what that means, it's just the radar seeing different objects being lofted higher up into the atmosphere that are into the storm, essentially. So when you see a ball like this developing, very uh, strong ind indication that a tornado is in progress, and uh, we have already had confirmation that there is a tornado in progress with this. So again, uh, down stream if you're seeing any of these communities listed make sure you are getting into your tornado safe place immediately especially Gibsland uh, Gibsland's going to be uh, the first uh, rather heavily or higher populated area in northern Bienville Parish that's going to be impacted by this storm uh, like I said you get about 10 minutes don't wait go now and uh, interior portion of your home away from windows and doors do not try to get visual confirmation of this tornado absolutely it will be not rain wrapped you will not see it it'll be way too late for you to take cover as you see that debris ball continuing to move a little bit farther eastward exactly yeah, no need to work on that 15 minutes of fame get to your safe place immediately
Exactly, and this will be eventually tracking over I-20 as well. So if you do know folks traveling between Minden and uh, even just back into Ruston, if you have no folks that are going to be traveling on I-20 in any direction, tell them that, hey, there's a very dangerous storm coming your way, tornado, damaging straight line winds certainly occurring with this as well, in addition to that tornado that has been confirmed. So again, uh, dangerous line of storms continues to progress eastward here, multiple warnings along it as uh, we're starting to push a little bit deeper, at least getting closer here. Here to our viewing area, and uh, we have multiple warnings up. Looks like we're still picking up on some rotation here with that storm. Again, this is storm relative velocity. Still also so. getting a, an area of rotation to the uh, in, now entering northern, far northern reaches of uh, Natchitoches Parish. Uh, I'll circle it for you here, Brian, but this little area right here. Uh, with, embedded within that tornado warning. Uh, that'll be moving into southern portions of uh, Bienville Parish and eventually would move uh, in, into southern Jackson Parish too. So uh, for folks farther southward, Jonesboro Hodge, you want to keep an eye on that storm. Uh, and in general, everyone needs to keep an eye on this line as it moves eastward. Cody, we could go back to Lynx uh, too and uh, we'll go ahead and let uh, Brian kind of drive things there on the screen for a little bit. So yeah, let's uh, take a closer look, at least right at the moment. We're coming up on about 10.30 here this morning, and uh, right as it is now, we have three active tornado warnings. Keep in mind there are active severe thunderstorm warnings occurring with the majority of this line as well. We just opted out to take them out, at least at this time, just so we can show you the uh, the tornado warnings. It was becoming a little bit cluttered earlier, but we still have three of them, and uh, they're starting to get into western portions of the Arklamis here. Again, notice, Rustin, you folks are not quite in the warning yet, but we're giving you lead time. We, uh, this, this line of storms will continue to have the energy as it pushes eastward. So uh, again, would not be surprised to see warnings issued. We're trying to give you as much lead time as possible to be prepared that dangerous storms are on the way. But uh, the one that we were looking at the most concerning earlier was the one that was getting closer into Bienville Parish here and was down into Webster Parish. Had a, a definite, uh, very strong uh, debris ball on that storm. And uh, it looks like or it looks like we were taking a temporary refreshing. break here. But, uh, you just yeah, take a second. There you go. this area back in here, you're seeing these little notches that are forming along this line. That's where that area of rotation would be. So, again, uh, folks, especially in the Gibsland, the Arcadia region, Simsboro, downstream, that's you folks should have been in your tornado safe place already. But again, if you have not been able to, now's the time to take warning. Again, if you know folks traveling along I 20 between Minden and roughly Ruston, if you know anybody in that, folks, again, this line of storms, that's where it at, is at, at least on the the R20 corridor as well. So uh, lots of blinding rain with that at the very least, damaging winds possible. And uh, y you know, and these these tornadoes can spin up just as quickly as uh, they're not there. So again, just keep that in mind. Very, very dangerous weather. If you don't have to be out traveling, please do not have, do not be out right now. So again, uh, another little side note, uh, a new tornado watch is gonna likely be issued farther downstream soon. Um, we'll probably see it for a good chunk of the rest of the Arklamis. That's probably coming in the next hour. We'll pass that along as it come, when, it, when it comes through, but uh, I would expect a new tornado watch for a good chunk of the rest of the Arklamis region uh, through the rest of the early afternoon here in the next few hours. Okay, so yeah, exactly. And a new, and a new tornado warning for Bienville and Natchitoches parishes. Uh, this is a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado 14 miles northeast of Cushada. Uh, that's that same circulation I just pointed out in northern Natchitoches Parish. Uh, 25 miles west of Jonesboro, moving northeast at 55 miles per hour. So that's Jonesboro Hodge area. Uh, uh, th that, that tornado warning does not include your parish yet, but northern portions of Natchitoches and southern Bienville uh, under a new tornado warning now uh, until 11:15. Uh, Okay, yeah, so there's that, that warning that he was just talking about just popped up here, and you can kind of see right in between the other two that we had as uh, area of circulation continues to move towards that area. Let's pull up a uh, storm relative velocity here real quickly just to see what we're looking at. Uh, we're at classic reflectivity as it is now, but storm relative velocity shows where the uh, storm is rotating here, essentially. And, uh, yeah, there are a lot of kinks along this line. When you see those little kinks along the lines where those spin-ups are typically uh, more likely to happen. So, again, uh, there's that one area in particular. I'm going to circle out a couple areas that are uh, kind of sticking out to me. Here's one right here, which uh, those reds and those greens pretty close to each other. There's also one up towards the north, and it looks like with that refresh here, looks like the one especially to the south kind of tightened up a little bit more. The so. circulations are, are, are spinning up so quickly within that line, and I think it's because the line itself is just so dynamic and, and, and is surging eastward so much 
that uh, this is going to be a problem with this line through the rest of the morning and early afternoon is that uh, these circulations are going to spin up rather rapidly. Now, there will be a little bit of an ad advantage for us once these get a little bit closer eastward to our radar that our radar will hit these every minute. Uh, the only reason you're not seeing the live storm tracker Doppler radar is because these storms are so far west in the Arklamas right now, and we've uh, we've kind of drawn down the radar power just a smidge so we can see the velocities. Uh, they're, they're just easily, more easily seen out of the Shreveport radar right now. Uh, and as they get closer to, say, Ruston, we'll be able to see better signatures on our own radar as well. So yeah, again, here's one of the areas of rotation that we're watching as these storms continue to push closer into our region here. That's a very, very strong signature coming up on storm relative velocity when those reds and greens are touching pretty close to each other here and uh, getting just north of the Ashland. Looks like New Rama communities um, heading towards the Pine Grove, the uh, old Saline area, the Brown community. Again, uh, this is just a uh, just out of Bienville Parish here, but, uh, you know, Lucky is one of the communities in Bienville Parish, so this is going to be uh, getting into our region here, just considering how fast these storms are moving. They're moving at 50 to 60 miles per hour at times, so again, if you're in a warning today, it's one of those days where you just make sure you get into your safe place. You do not want to be messing around with these, and just because they can spin up so quickly, so, uh, you know, this is one of the strongest areas of rotation that we're seeing so far. I'm going to kind of do a larger view because we do have had multiple tornado warnings in effect, but it looks like they dropped the extreme northern one from what I can tell. Yeah, that's now, right. Now we're down to about three warnings. I think it actually here. expired at 1030, so... So there's some good news there. It looks like there wasn't enough confidence to reissue another one, but again, that's uh, we still have multiple areas of concern along this line. As you can see, how it kind of loops all the way down, that's where those uh, velocity couplets really get their act together, and that's where they can produce those tornadoes. So that's what we're keeping an eye out on. Again, uh, looks like with the latest update here, that one that was off towards the south, heading into uh, northern portions of Bienville Parish, not as pronounced as it was, however, still there there, you can still see there's uh, reds and greens just strong enough to where they're, you know, they're touching and they're moving off a little bit towards the south um, of this area. So there's some good news there as uh, it looks like maybe it's staying in less populated areas, but nonetheless, looks like um, we'll be seeing some areas of rotation moving along the I-20 corridor here and closer into the Gibsland, Arcadia, Simsboro area as you would, folks are still under a tornado. I would point. also stress, Brian, at this point, the call to action for folks in Ruston, Grambling, Farmable, Jonesboro Hodge. Um, uh, these, these are areas that you're not under any warnings yet. Um, you're not even under a severe thunderstorm warning. But go ahead and get where you need to be. Um, th th this line is moving quickly east. And I, I, I just know that there are a lot of folks in north central Louisiana that are watching these storms rather intently. And uh, there's really no point in, in, in waiting. Um, once the line arrives, it's going to be blinding rain anyway. We already started to get some rain in, in Ruston. Uh, so, like I said, Highway 167 from near the state line southward all the way to near Winfield. Uh, you folks just go ahead and get where you need to be now and, uh, and, and uh, wait this storm out. Yeah, exactly. Better to be safe than sorry. Give you, we're trying to give you as much lead time as possible, even though that there is not an official warning downstream. You know, it's likely that warnings will continue as this line pushes off, as storms will continue to work into an environment that's uh, supportive of this kind of activity. So I'm going to pull up the shear button here. We'll kind of see uh, what we're dealing with in that that aspect here and again even if you know a tornado doesn't go right over your home we do have a large line of strong damaging straight line winds which can almost be just as bad as a tornado so again keep that in mind you know that's one of the many hazards that this line is producing is strong straight line winds and uh, folks are going to be seeing that especially along and south of I-20 at least at this time but even back up to the north as part of this line kind of continues here you're seeing bits and pieces of strong winds occurring with this with this line of storms. So again, just take it very, very seriously today, folks. We have all the parameters in place for uh, for some potent severe weather. So just keep that in mind. And again, three active tornado warnings just after uh, or just after 1030 here this morning. Again, there's Ruston for uh, for reference. Jonesboro, you're right on the edge too. So folks south of uh, the, you know, uh, uh, south along 167 need to be kind of just keeping an eye out on things as well. And as mentioned, you know, folks in farmers not quite the Twin Cities yet. We still have a little bit of time before these storms get here. But again, you know, 
we'll be keeping an eye out on it as it gets closer. So shear button showing that that one circulation, especially in the northern end, kind of tightening up here just south of Gibbs Lynn and uh, getting into the Arcadia area too. That looks like the strongest area of uh, our sh what our shear is showing here. So again, I'll pull up storm relative velocity and see what that's doing as far as the couplets go. So what here. Brian's about to pull up for you is is essentially the radar measuring winds and wind speeds. Uh, the green is winds moving toward the radar, uh, which is uh, that's the National Weather Service in Shreveport's radar. The red is going away from the radar. Now, where those reds and greens combine together, that's where you see a twisting of the winds, a turning of the winds, and uh, again, that's where you see the potential for a tornado. The one thing that is also can be taken away from this map is the fact that you see those bright greens um, that, that are kind of feeding into this storm. That's the strong winds uh, being kind of blown out from this storm, the, the strong straight line wind potential, but also uh, there is a pretty strong low level jet that's feeding these storms with southeasterly winds and that provide a lot of twist in the atmosphere and a lot of twisting of the winds in the lower levels of the atmosphere, which creates that tornadic potential. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, with uh, as that low-level jet strengthens and we get more instability from heating of the day, that's why we stress that, you know, especially the, the atmosphere really hasn't seen too much storm activity, at, at least ahead of this line. So, uh, you know, it's one of those days that is going to be uh, having plenty of those, uh, those ingredients in place, especially with the winds, to uh, feed the, the line of uh, showers and storms and uh, to produce damaging winds and uh, t tornadoes along it. So, again, looking kind of towards Towards the south, I'm going to uh, look at these ones down south. Not showing as pronounced couplets, but you can see wherever these little waves are, that's where those little areas of the uh, low-level jet are being ingested by this line of storms here. So uh, sometimes it wanes where it'll, you know, weaken for a little bit and then it can quickly spin up just as quick as it wound down. So that's what makes these storms uh, s as dangerous because you just, it's one of those situations where it's harder to really pinpoint exactly uh, where those are going to be. So we're going to be just keeping an eye out on that for now. I'll go back to the shear product here just to check in on that. Um, but actually, let's let's go back to classic reflectivity. And, um, a, and a reminder, while, while Brian's pulling that up, that a tornado watch remains in effect till noon for about another hour and 20 minutes. Uh, we will see another tornado watch. That's pretty much a foregone conclusion at this point. We'll also keep an eye out for those little discrete cells that you're seeing out over Winfield. Um, a, a lot of that uh, activity out ahead of the main line where you can see one of those classic supercells form. The threat of that should be pretty limited uh, given the early showers and storms that we have and, and this line that's moving in and kind of uh, gobbling up the atmosphere and the, the more favorable conditions. But uh, still could see some development out of that. Uh, Lexi's been watching uh, relays from, uh, from the National Weather Service. Not a lot of wind damage and, and damage reports so far. Uh, but, uh, yeah, most of that activity uh, has continued to at least produce a, 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 the, da the potential for widespread damaging wind gusts as that line moves through. Yeah, and we've been keeping an eye on this since pretty much it entered East Texas and was just about to cross the state line. So we've been watching this pretty much since about 8 o'clock, maybe even earlier this morning. So we were just kind of waiting until the storms got a little bit closer. And, of course, we went uh, live on the air just as that uh, first tornado warning started to brush uh, very, very close to our area. So, uh, yeah, so that's why we, we, that's where we're at right now. So, again, we still do have a couple of active tornado warnings at this time. They're going to expire anywhere from 11 to 11.15. But depending if that storm will continue to be nice and strong as it moves off towards the east, it could be expanded, especially for folks in Ruston all the way up to El Dorado and even for Winfield. Uh, again, you're not in the warning just yet, but this is the time to maybe kind of start paying really close attention, get ready to enter into the act stage. And that goes for a lot of folks off towards the east here. You're probably most likely still in the plan and prepare section, but at the same time, we want you to start transitioning into the act. Now, normally the act is when that warning does come out, but at this point, since the warnings are so close to those areas off towards your east, including Winfield, Rust, and Neldredo, like we were mentioning, we want you to uh, begin to transition into that act stage. So again, we do have that tornado watch continues until 11, uh, excuse me, till noon, and then we have a couple of tornado warnings that continue anywhere from 11 to 1115, which might be extended as it moves off towards the east here. So again, we've been watching this since pretty much it entered eastern uh, portions of Texas since around maybe 7, 8 o'clock this morning, and now it's beginning to uh, become much stronger for our portions in here. So that's where we're at right now. So there's the reflectivity. You can see those heavier showers stretching all the way up to, looks like Columbia County in Arkansas, all the way through uh, Lincoln Parish, all the way up to Bienville.
Huntsville, Claiborne, and all the way down towards eastern Texas, as indicated by those darker red colors and those orange colors as well. So let's go ahead and see if we can pull up a, uh, let me see here. Okay, let me see here. Let's go to Shreveport. And again, a reminder okay. uh, that a, a tornado watch is likely forthcoming for the rest of the Arklamis. Yes. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, still seeing some very, very strong circulations and wind signatures. There's our new tornado watch. Uh, we'll go till, uh, doing time math in my head, 8 o'clock um, tonight. Uh, 8 o'clock tonight. Yeah, so. Uh, that, that, that does, does that include the eastern parishes? Uh, yeah, th we're, still, we're still working on that. Uh, it okay. is going to be a PDS tornado watch. Uh, for, yes, tornado for, for folks that don't know what that means, that is the highest um, uh, tornado watch that can be issued for an area. Yeah, PDS, PDS meaning potential particularly, uh, dangerous situation. Particularly dangerous situation. So uh, that'll be a PDS tornado watch that's forthcoming for probably the most of the rest of the Arklamis region. Uh, like I said, the, the National Weather Service offices themselves are still pushing that watch out. Uh, but it is, it, it's coming and like I said, will be out for probably most of the rest of the Arklamis. It is a particularly dangerous situation, meaning that strong long track tornadoes are, are emphasized as a possibility uh, within that watch. Yeah, and, we're, and again, we're going to be here from the first warning like we were just a couple uh, hours ago until the very last one. So we're, we're here to keep you guys informed. So we're not going anywhere until uh, everything is all clear. So again, we're looking at that storm relative velocity. Still kind of seeing uh, maybe some a little bit of balance with those reds and green colors, but maybe it's looking like to get a little bit, a little bit loosened up. I know the National Weather Service was still keeping an eye on some potential uh, rotation tightening up somewhere. I think it was in Bienville Parish. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Brian Jarrett. Yeah, it's, you're right. Uh, it's a, a little notch uh, near Lucky in the Bienville Lucky, Parish. Yeah. Um, uh, you yeah, can so see right it there. Here. Yeah. Right here. Let me see if I can circle that for you guys. Yeah, so that'll be uh, that'll be crawling to the north and east, like I said, pretty close to the Jonesboro Hodge areas. Uh, it'll be crossing 167 probably in the next 15, 20 minutes or so. Uh, the individual segments of this line are starting to race to the east pretty quickly. The individual particular tornado circulations moving 55, 60 miles an hour. It's about as fast as you drive on the uh, on the highway, folks. So uh, again, these things are moving quickly. Uh, that tornado warning continues for uh, Bienville, Claiborne, Lincoln Parish. A severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado near Arcadia, 15 miles west of Grambling. That one slowed its forward motion down a little bit. Now moving northeast at about 40 miles an hour. Nice. Let's take a look at the Shrew pro product. Again, the, sh the shear not looking as great as it was, but either way, uh, straight line winds like Brian was mentioning over and over again could be a very big concern for those areas. And again, th those winds can reach anywhere from 60 to 70 miles per hour, just uh, depending on the strength. And then, again, they can be very mistaken for the potential for tornado damage. Uh, straight line winds and tornado uh, tornadoes do, do give off uh, very similar strong winds at that. So again, it looks like it's lightening up just a little bit, but I'm not saying that to kind of light in the situation. It just means it might be just weakening a bit, but either way, it can still pick back up uh, as the uh, time goes along. So we're just around uh, about a quarter till 11, and again, we do have still have uh, three active tornado warnings at this time, some of which have had confirmed tornadoes or radar indicated, or some of which who, that still have the potential of producing dangerous tornadoes. So again, if you live in Lucky, Celine, Bienville, you're all in that tornado warning, so you need to still be in your safe places until the warning has been lifted. But if you're just outside of this area, including Jonesboro, Ruston, Simsboro, uh, not quite into the Twin Cities just yet, but you guys need to start getting into the act situation, whereas areas off towards the east, including us here in the Twin Cities, may want to start trans slowly transitioning, get any last minute plans you have in place, start getting it into the act stage, whether it's charging any batteries you may have, make sure you have uh, emergency alerts uh, active in any way that you can, so you can get that information. And again, we're going to continue to be on the air from the first warning to the last warning, so again, we're not going anywhere. And, and that's the other thing, too, is, is make Make phone calls for folks and make sure they're paying attention right now um, and, and just give them the heads up make a phone call and go hey just making sure you're, you're keeping an eye on the weather uh, we're on Facebook live if, if, if this same stream is available on Facebook live if you lose power you can head over to Facebook live we'll be there as long as we have power uh, so uh, again just kind of keep that in mind uh, that, uh, that everybody needs to take care of everybody today and make sure that uh, everybody's in their in their safe places uh, interior portion of your home away from windows and doors uh, 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 put as many walls between you and the outside as possible Brian the uh, the new tornado watch is out uh, this does include the rest of the Arklamis um, in fact yeah it, the, the only areas not under a tornado watch in the Arklamis right now are Columbia 
Washita and Calhoun counties in South Arkansas. Everyone else under a tornado watch and the easternmost counties and parishes. We're talking Ashley, Chico, Drew, Bradley, uh, counties in southeastern Arkansas, and then Morehouse, East Carroll, West Carroll, Richland, Franklin, Tensaw, Catahoula, Concordia parishes. That is a PDS tornado watch, meaning that this is a particularly dangerous situation. That tornado watch goes until 8 o'clock tonight. So again, that just uh, you know emphasizes the point that everyone needs to be paying attention to the weather today. And uh, you know the, the ingredients are just there. We've seen it with this line of uh, storms already. So far this morning, it's been a pretty early morning, but uh, storms have been very, very active. So again, uh, make sure you're taking today very, very seriously. Kind of looking at the velocity data here. Actually, let's look at uh, storm relative velocity just to kind of get a better idea of what the storm's actually doing here, as uh, far as relative to the storm. So, again, this is uh, what we've been talking about here. A couple areas of uh, just kind of, it's a little cluttered, but you can see a general area of rotation here just to the southwest of Arcadia, now starting to move over the I-20 corridor here as it pushes eastward. So, again, uh, folks in Arcadia, folks in Simsboro, looks like maybe possibly a weak little uh, velocity couplet off towards your southwest as well. So, again, uh, storms are moving very, very quickly. They're starting to somewhat kind of outrun the, uh, the initial warning. So, again, uh, in addition to that, that threat for damaging straight line winds certainly exists with this line of storms. But uh, the good news is, though, it look, looks like at least right now this line may be taking somewhat of a break here as uh, not showing as strong as it was when it was first coming into the Arklamets. Now, when I say that, I want to stress that do not uh, take that any lighter because, uh, again, it can spin up just as quickly as it takes a break. So All right, real quick, Brian, it looks like a new tornado warning has been issued for Bienville and Jackson Parish until 11:15. Uh, it says a severe thunderstorm warning capable of producing a tornado was located near Jonesboro, moving northeast at about 60 miles per hour. So again, folks that were in Jonesboro not quite in the warning just yet are most likely now going to be in that warning. So it looks like folks, yeah, the, the Jonesboro Hodge area, there's a little area of rotation that's being picked up, and there's the warning just popped up on your screen here, going right over the Jonesboro Hodge region. And, so And Brian, on, on that note also, a new severe thunderstorm warning has been issued for portions of Union County, Claiborne, Union, Jackson, Lincoln, and Washita parishes. That does have a potential tornado tag in it, a, a, a tornado possible tag. So the National Weather Service, when they do that, basically acknowledges the fact that a tornado could briefly spin up uh, within that new severe thunderstorm warning. And again, that's for Union County, Union Parish, Claiborne, Lincoln, Jackson, and Washita parishes until 1145 to go on top of the new tornado warning in Jonesboro Hodge, right along Highway 167, where Brian just circled that area. The interior portion of your home away from windows and doors, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Yeah, this is looking like a classic uh, velocity couplet here when you see those reds and those greens pretty close to each other here. Looks like a very strong rotation. That's why the National Weather Service decided to issue a tornado warning for this region. So again, just east now of the uh, Highway 167 area, but uh, again, uh, it's going to be moving off towards the northeast here pretty rapidly as these storms are moving pretty quickly. So again, a uh, tornado warning is in effect for portions of Bienville and portions of Jackson Parish now for that reason. As we can see pretty strong uh, velocity couplet on that. So uh, I'll take it back here to the shear button real quickly um, to see what our shear marker is showing here. Let's say and, live uh, storm tracker Doppler the radar picks up that circulation fairly well too. It is very, very messy on the, uh, the, the and I don't even want to show it on air because it is so messy, but it, it still picks up that area circulation just to the southwest of Hodge along Highway 167. Uh, now with the, the new radar refresh right over Hodge uh, along Highway 167. So yeah, definitely a very, uh, very strong rotation being indicated with the storm. That's why that warning was issued for it. And again, uh, folks in that area, the Jonesboro Hodge area, if you know where anyone's traveling along the Highway 167 area, uh, tell them to they need to be getting into their safe place. And uh, this this area is going to be tracking off towards the northeast, just to kind of give an idea of who is kind of in the path. Uh, Chatham, you folks are down in the warning. You guys are in this official warning here. So again, uh, starting to inch ever so closer to 
through the Twin Cities. Again, there's Ruston just kind of for some reference here. The bulk of the uh, the activity starting to get closer to that area. So again, if folks in uh, in, uh, in portions of Jackson Parish especially, um, that's where the uh, stronger circulation now is showing up here as uh, it pushes off towards the east. Again, now this is this is your official call to action for the Twin Cities for uh, West Monroe, Monroe, and all of the uh, metro cities along this. Our latest warning is uh, now starting to knock on your doorstep. So this is the time to start thinking about either getting into your safe place or thinking about doing so as uh, this area of rotation starts to get closer to us. Again, no official warning for the Twin Cities. I want to emphasize that. We are not under an official tornado warning at least as of now. But again, this storm moving off towards the northeast fairly quickly. This is your call to action. And even for folks up into Bastrop and Morehouse Parish, and even down into the southern portions of Washita Parish, you folks need to be paying attention as uh, this area of rotation starts to uh, move into the area. Uh, Brian, that, that tornado uh, in Bienville, Claiborne, Lincoln Parishes is confirmed. Um, is it, is it this area? It looks like this area rotation. Correct? It says our, over it was, Arcadia. It's located over Arcadia. 13 miles west of Grambling. Okay. So that would be the northern edge storm um, moving into uh, to far southern reaches of Union Parish eventually. Uh, that does have a confirmed uh, tornado on the ground. Um, it's probably this area right here just north of Grambling. And again, a rotation continues to, to, to really kind of increase as you move toward... Um, uh, the Jonesboro Hodge area as well. So again, uh, there's, there's, it's getting, it's getting messy quickly uh, for, for folks in north central Louisiana. I-20 points southward. Uh, that's where we're seeing right now probably the best, uh, the best threat. So uh, again, those are the, the two different pockets of, of tornado warnings that we have in effect. Uh, one that's now moved outside of Arcadia. Uh, this little area right here is where that would appear to be going, trailing to, it's almost on the southern edge of this warning polygon here, uh, and will continue to move off to the north and east. And then this other area of rotation, which is really starting to strengthen quite a bit, uh, to the west of Jonesboro Hodge, we'll be crossing 167 here shortly. Uh, this area right here, uh, I'm going to zoom in real close, maybe we can get some road names uh, uh, Sweet Home Road and Danville Road. Uh, this is the uh, general uh, area of rotation you see here trailing to the north and east. And I'm going to go ahead and move this on the, the left-hand side of your screen so we can get out of the way. And you can see here's North Hodge, Hodge, Jonesboro. This is 167. Uh, and this is the far western sections of, of uh, Jackson Parish. And uh, you can see Lockhart Drive and, and, and some of these areas, the Antioch community, uh, that's on its way toward Ruston. Uh, these are areas that will be impacted. Here's the Arcadia Highway, uh, Bear Creek Road, some of the uh, roads. If these sound familiar in your area, make a call, let people know what's going on, and let them know that a possible tornado is headed their direction. I'm going to switch over to our uh, live storm tracker Doppler radar, which should be able to pick up that rotation fairly well. We're, uh, I think, probably at about 2,500 feet uh, there, and you can see it, again, just to the west of Hodge. Again, the radar gets pretty messy in this particular area with so much going on, but you can see that area of rotation there uh, still pretty well defined and, and just kind of bouncing between different radar modes to see what we can see. Uh, there's our shear marker right there showing twisting of the winds and also uh, just strong gusty winds associated with this storm as it moves toward the Jonesboro Hodge area. Uh, I want to zoom back out just a smidge so we can see uh, still some pretty strong uh, shear signatures to the uh, northeast of Arcadia where that confirmed tornado was on the ground just a few minutes ago. And actually wanted to see if we could even pick up uh, any debris signatures. And actually I'm going to bounce over to the Fort Polk radar just to see what we can see. That's, uh, that's a much more elevated look at uh, the storm that's moving to the in, in and around the Jonesboro Hodge area, but still, again, shows how uh, that, that rotation continues to climb higher in the atmosphere. So again, tornado warnings remain active, uh, and, and you can see the circulation now looks to be passing generally to the northwest of the Jonesboro Hodge area, but there's also this area right here, and uh, there's this area right here. They're both generally moving to the north and east. This one will impact Jonesboro Hodge, kind of right between the two towns there on 167. Again, get your safe place now. And then there's also this other circulation that will generally pass to the north of town, will impact the Antioch community and surrounding areas uh, as it moves to the north and east. So both uh, very, very violent areas of circulation, but also very, very violent areas that indicate the possibility of uh, some gusty to damaging winds. And you're also starting to see these shear markers kind of popping out ahead 
head, which does create the concern of some prefrontal uh, cells. But uh, again, main, main uh, headache right now is the line and the embedded circulations in themselves. We're also still keeping an eye out on some of this, what we call discrete activity out ahead of the main line from Winfield eastward uh, for uh, any intensification uh, that could be happening there. But really right now, the main, the main concern is, is the tornado worn storms that are uh, moving. One uh, that will be crossing 167, I would say in the next 30 to 45 minutes. So you've got plenty of lead time from Vianna, Dubach, northward uh, toward Junction City and along Highway 167 in Western Union Parish and northern sections of Lincoln Parish. Farther southward along 167, the uh, situation is a little bit more urgent. You folks need to get to your safe place now because this uh, line and this potential tornado that'll be crossing into Jonesboro Hodge and the surrounding areas will be on you folks uh, shortly if it's not already on you in the northern sections of uh, Jackson Parish uh, moving north and east. Damaging wind gusts, obviously a main concern there too, where we could see some wind gusts top 70, 75 miles an hour. And in many ways and in many instances, that can be stronger than a weak tornado. So uh, you don't need to wait till tornado warnings are particularly issued for your area. You just need to act now and uh, again, make sure that you're in your safe place. It's a pretty simple process today. Nobody should really be anywhere anyway, considering the fact that of what's going on across the country. But also think about advanced plans in place. Go ahead and have your cell phones charged. Make sure you have your tablet charged. We will be on Facebook Live. This exact same streams on Facebook Live. So it'll be available there. Uh, yeah, real quick, Jared. There's a new uh, tornado warning out for Bienville, Claiborne, uh, Lincoln, and Union Parish until 11:30. It says that a tornado-producing storm was located near Arcadia, which is the one we were just talking about, or nine miles northwest of Grambling, moving northeast at 35 miles per hour. Okay, so here's your new tornado warning polygon. This will uh, dance just to the north of downtown Ruston. The warning itself stays north of the interstate. Uh, at least as it gets farther eastward. The interstate kind of dives to the south just a smidge once you get into Lincoln Parish. So there's our, the cutoff to the warning. Uh, we still have a, a, that tornado warning for portions of uh, Jackson Parish. This is for northern Lincoln. Uh, and again, uh, severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado. You can see the uh, area circulation generally right in, in the general Grambling area. And then there's also another area of rotation back where the, uh, the warning was kind of originated, just now moving into western sections of Lincoln Parish. And again, these spin ups are so brief, but so quick, and, and, and they can be violent at times. There's our new circulation that is kind of reformed toward the northern and toward the centralmost part of that uh, polygon. You can see it to the northwest of Hodge, uh, and I'll circle it for you right this area right here and moving off to the north and east. So again, if you know family or, or friends in these surrounding areas, make the calls now. Let them know what's going on in their, in their locations. And again, let them know that a dangerous storm is headed their way. Uh, this is, again, the Bear Creek community, Mount Olive Road. Here's the Quitman community right along 167. This red line right here is Highway 167, which will eventually move northward and intersects with I-20 at Ruston. But uh, you can see Sweetwater Road. Here's the Antioch community, Lockhart Drive, Pumpkin Center. Uh, these are some of the surrounding neighborhoods and, and uh, townships in these areas. And if they, they sound familiar, like I said, get on a phone, call somebody, let them know what's headed their direction. Uh, a lot of these areas may have already lost power. Let them know where they can find us on, uh, on Facebook. And uh, like I said, just keep everybody safe at this point. Make sure everybody is where they need to be going. Uh, but that is a very violent area of, uh, of uh, rotation. And then again, this, this storm, as you move to the north and uh, as it moves off to the north and northeast, this circulation gets a lot messier. And uh, it is a lot more difficult to really uh, pick up those areas of rotation. I'm going to bounce over to our radar, and it gets even messier from there as uh, you start trying to pick up those areas of rotation within the, uh, the warning polygon itself. But all of this moving east, Vianna, Dubach, and even as far south as Ruston, you folks need to go ahead and be in your safe place, interior portion of your home away from windows and doors, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Uh, that's your call to action. I'm going to go ahead and flip it back over to our basic reflectivities mode. This is your traditional Doppler radar that you would see on a daily basis. Uh, and, and again, uh, for the areas that uh, are, are being impacted, gusty to damaging winds, you can see this line starting to kind of surge back out to the east. And as, as the segments of these lines start Start surging, it creates the concern of damaging wind potential. And you can see the tornado warnings now starting to butt right up to Washita Parish. So uh, for folks in Monroe, West Monroe, uh, Farmerville, Bastrop, 
uh, Richwood, Columbia, Ravel. All you folks need to start keeping an eye on this line. You should have been watching it all morning. But uh, damaging wind gusts and the possibility of uh, isolated tornadoes uh, will be possible in that line over the next hour to hour and a half. So again, we're just coming up on about 11 o'clock this morning. So again, we do have a few active tornado warnings at this time. You can see that strong line of showers and thunderstorms. And when you see those darker reds, that indicates that very heavier rainfall. So uh, again, but no comfort. Uh, Basically, if there's going to be any kind of uh, confirmed tornado within the next couple minutes, it's going to be very hard to see. Do not go outside and try to look at it. Get inside, get indoors, get away from all the windows. Uh, like, like Jared was mentioning, call your family and friends. Make sure you are transitioning now into the act stage, especially since now this morning is right on the border of Washita Parish. So folks, like he's saying, uh, Monroe, Richwood, start transitioning into that act stage. It very well could uh, be issued for our area probably within the next, I'd say, about uh, 15 minutes. So again, we. Uh, Again, have those active warnings right now. Looks like one has just been dismissed because it did expire at 11 o'clock, but uh, others will continue at least until 11:15 or 11:30 or even beyond that. Again, some tornado watches. Off towards our west have been issued until 12 p.m., but just recently our eastern parishes and some of our eastern Arkansas counties have been issued under that tornado watch until 8 p.m. tonight. So that circulation is starting to wrap up quick, Lexi. Okay, and we'll North go ahead and Hodge, try and... Uh, and uh, Quitman, those surrounding okay. areas in Jackson Parish. All right, let's um, see if we can pull up the velocity then or the reflectivity. Oops. Yeah. Oops. Hang on one second. You go so ahead and try and pull up yeah, the... That, uh, that velocity is, uh, is starting to kind of tighten back up. Uh, yeah, you can see Yeah, it there right we there. go, right here. So that'll be crossing. Uh, it's already crossed Highway 167. Um, but uh, again, very dangerous looking storm that's uh, headed that particular direction. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, most, of these, uh, most of these locations will continue to deal with uh, the possibility of these brief spin-ups. But that's a pretty violent circulation. Uh, if not a... a possible tornado, a tornado could be imminent, could be developing right now. Yeah, so we, we can see the greens and we can also see the, the reds, so indicating that kind of moisture right there. Again, this looks like it's just to the north northeast of about Jonesboro. So again, if you do live in this red polygon that you do see on your screen or anywhere near this rotation, go ahead and get to your safe places, uh, get away from all windows, uh, make sure you are checking up on your family and friends, activate that severe weather plan. One thing I do want to note too is that it looks like Sim Simsboro and Ruston, even though you're right in between these two tornado warnings, still want to make sure you are acting with that anyway because again this is a strong line of showers and thunderstorms that's moving across our area especially with the possibility of some straight line damaging winds associated with that line of storms uh, Chatham is also included in it and again it's right on the cusp uh, in the the border of Washita Parish at this time so again this is the area of uh, concern that we're watching right now you can see the little bit of that rotation associated with that so again looking downstream if you're uh, maybe around Chatham or getting ready in, to move into Washita Parish uh, you need to start acting on your uh, severe weather plan at this time. Yeah, it looks like now, yeah. Monroe, West Monroe needs to start keeping an eye on this storm um, in the next little bit. Now, these circulations will wobble to the north and south a little bit as they move mm -hmm. through. Yeah. But uh, it'll be knocking on Washtenaw Parish's door in the next half hour or so. Uh, and, and just looking downstream, I'm thinking Camp Road to Calhoun uh, in, in those general areas uh, and then even into, into the greater parts of West Monroe. We're going to have to keep an eye on this storm uh, in the next couple of hours as it moves our direction. I would say in the next 45 minutes, uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be dealing with uh, more widespread issues in, in Washita Parish. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. We went ahead and pulled up the, the shear product, so you can see the uh, intense uh, winds associated with that area. Um, so again, and we've been seeing winds anywhere from 60 to maybe even 70 miles per hour, and like Jared was mentioning before, it could be even stronger than a weak tornado. Either way, we just need to make sure that you are, are staying weather and you are acting upon that. So we'll go ahead and pull up the storm relative velocity again. Uh, it looks like it's not looking uh, not as tight as it was, but again, it is still there. You can see those greens and those reds, and it looks like some of that is becoming to get a little bit darker. Here, this is the area that we've been watching right here. Again, just to about to the northeast of uh, Jonesboro. So we'll continue to watch that as it continues to develop. So again, that tornado warning continues until 1130, I believe it was. And then again, it continues outwards. It does include the area of Chatham. Again, these two warnings right in between does not include Arcadia, uh, Simsboro, or Ruston. But either way, we just want you to, to make sure that you are still in your safe places at this time. And I know a lot of people are um, kind of concerned with the whole stay-at-home order and the COVID-19 and everything. Uh, do the best that you can to find a good structure to get into if that's what you usually do during these severe weather events. Um, always put uh, your lives uh, in uh, lives first at this point. So 
With that being said. Yeah, it, this is, it's a tough judgment call for a lot of folks today. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, you know, and, and there's that Vianna, do you see that circulation? On the northern edge, uh, Cooktown mm. and Ruston at Vianna 167. Um, that could be feedback from the radar, but that looks like a, a pretty violent little area uh, just to the north of Ruston in our, in our current tornado warning for Lincoln Parish. Um, so you've got two different areas really generally that are, that are looking. And, and there, there's lofted debris with that storm to the east of uh, Hebron and Weston and into Jackson Parish. Um, it looks like a, maybe not, maybe a former debris signature. I think I think that rate that, that debris is fairly lofted in the atmosphere, but uh, m maybe previous debris from that storm. Yeah. So this is the area he was talking about, just to the north of Bristol. We kind of see a little bit of green and reds, maybe some signs of some very uh, weak rotation at that. But again, that's another area of concern. And again, it uh, looks like Vienna. And again, Ruston's not included in that tornado warning, but again, it is up towards your north. But it looks like Vienna, it's right around that area as well. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. But again, our main concern right now is going to be uh, for this area right here, just to the northeast of Jonesboro. Uh, not looking as great as it was, but in the, the potential for some, maybe some weak uh, rotation is there as well. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the, uh, the reflectivity real quick to kind of see how is looking right now. So we'll go ahead and pull up the reflectivity. Whoops, right here. Also, we're going to be uh, switching uh, radar modes again soon uh, to get uh, some more appreciable um, velocity data a little bit closer to the radar site itself as these storms get a little bit closer. Um, so uh, just kind of keep that in mind uh, as, as you view from home. Um, that uh, that we'll be switching radar modes here shortly, uh, so it may look a little different. Uh, I don't think you'll notice a whole lot at home, but uh, just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, again, tornado watch remains in effect for uh, a good chunk of the Arklamis until noon, uh, so for about another hour or so, that may need to be extended locally. Uh, we also still have um, a new tornado watch that's been issued, a PDS tornado watch, meaning that this is a particularly dangerous situation. That's in effect until 8 o'clock tonight for the eastern half of the Arklamis. Yeah, and definitely see that heavier rainfall moving across uh, those parishes as we speak. Again, Wash Stop Parish not included in the warning just yet, but this is something that will most likely happen within probably the next 20 to 40 minutes. So, again, if you do live in Wash Stop Parish, we need to uh, be acting on it at this time. All right, uh, just taking a, a glance at uh, a lot of different radar products, and we've got a lot of information to pour over right now, but that circulation uh, now will be moving to the northwest of Chatham soon, uh, and, and it's still uh, uh, very, very well defined on radar, uh, but most of this activity uh, has continued to show uh, some rapid intensification, and then at times uh, has kind of pulsed down in intensity as well. But there is a, a very broad area of rotation and, and, and strong winds in the low levels of the atmosphere. And, uh, and again, I'm going to switch over to our live storm tracker Doppler radar and uh, take. A, and, and again, this this radar mode may get a little messy and hard to see, but you can see uh, there's an area of rotation here again, moving to the north and east, and then also still seeing pockets of strong winds. Now now moving through Shudrant and then stretching back to the north where we see that little twist uh, to the northeast of Vianna moving to the northeast as well. So that will also move into northern sections of uh, Lincoln Parish. So as I mentioned, this radar image is a little bit uh, more difficult to see those, uh, those areas of rotation as uh, distinctly, but you can see the area on the bottom left-hand side of your screen, and then another one right here uh, continues to pulse up, and then there's another area of rotation right here. So again, it gets a little bit messier as you look at a lot of these different radar modes, but also keep in mind, uh, there's the, the, and this is looking higher in the atmosphere, but there's our high area of rotation now east of Vianna, and then our another area of rotation, which again has been strengthening at times, uh, moving toward the Chatham and Eris areas. So if you're uh, in these particular locations, again, uh, proper tornado precautions, interior portion of your home, away from windows and doors. This is the Vernon community, and you can see Olive Grove Road. Uh, all, all this, again, will move to the north and east Oak Ridge, and then Eris is back behind me. Uh, that kind of puts in perspective what you folks are, are seeing right now, and that shear button kind of, again, shows the strong wind signatures uh, associated with this storm as it moves off to the east. Uh, for uh, additional areas, is that another tornado warning back behind us? 
Uh, it doesn't look like it. I have, we haven't had oh, any indications. An old, okay, this is an old tornado warning that for some reason hasn't been yes. cleared off of the... Okay, I was, I was wondering what that was. Uh, so these are our two active tornado warnings that are that are in place. And again, the leading edge of these storms will be moving toward uh, uh, Ouachita Parish in the next five to ten minutes. Uh, there are the active warnings. It'll, it's, uh, it's still yet to be determined whether uh, we'll see additional warnings issued downstream uh, for, for parts of Ouachita and Union Parishes. Um, the the rotation themselves on the live radar uh, looks to be a little bit more limited, but you can still see the reds and greens combined uh, across the northeastern sections of Jackson Parish. And then also the leading line of what looks to be surging, damaging wind gusts uh, as this line starts to move through as well. For those that are just wondering what our live radar looks like right now, uh, again, moving into Ouachita Parish, those storms will be uh, uh, pretty violent and uh, could be pretty intense uh, soon. So again, be careful on the roadways if you have to be out. But again, this should be a, a pretty easy severe weather event in terms of keeping everybody in place. Because uh, again, could, given the uh, conditions that are that are in place across the country, again, just looking at, at different radar uh, off screen, Brian, it still looks like we have an area of circulation to the northwest of Chatham, and then another one to the northeast of Ruston. Uh, both of them uh, headed east. Yeah, let's see if we can pick this up real quickly on Shreveport's radar. Again, we're, we're looking at this pretty high up in the atmosphere as the radar beam kind of gets to the edge of its uh, just area here. So as uh, Jared mentioned here. Have one area of more broad rotation, larger area of rotation here down in the portions of uh, Jackson Parish here, but getting ever so close to the uh, Washita Parish line. So there's Washita Parish, there's uh, Monroe, the Twin Cities, like all the metro cities here as well. There's that second area of, uh, of uh, rotation here by, by Viana, now starting to get east of Viana here, north of Ruston. Ruston's kind of right in between these two areas of circulation. Brian, National Weather Service is also acknowledging that damaging wind signature that our radar just picked up moving from Shudrin into Washita Parish. So yeah, folks in Shudrin and uh, in, in, between Shudrin and Calhoun, especially you folks need to be paying attention to this area. Damaging winds occurring with this storm as well. And uh, again, just a larger area of rotation. There's the uh, Eris community as well. And um, just to give you an idea, that's where it is. It's just off towards your southwest here. And they're moving pretty quickly. So again, uh, watching these two areas in particular, I'm going to get back out here. And uh, one kind of smaller up towards the north into portions of Lincoln Parish, now getting into uh, eventually portions into um, Union Parish here. So it's uh, just to the southwest of Farmerville. So folks in Farmerville need to be keeping an eye out on this. Again, you guys are not in an official warning at this time, but there's a smaller area, but very pronounced, very close uh, red and green on that map here. And I'll zoom in a little bit to where we can look at, maybe get some streets on uh, what we can see. But if you see some of those communities um, that look familiar here. It looks like a Sidarden or by Mineral Springs. You folks in that area, um, I apologize if I butchered that. But uh, again, that's that's in northern areas of Lincoln Parish and getting into southern portions of Union Parish here. And again, there's those uh, damaging winds that you can see picked up by red here uh, heading into the Shudrin area. So uh, strong winds there. Looks like maybe even another little area of rotation just towards the north of Shudrin that just popped up here with the latest return or the latest update here on our map. But regardless, this is getting closer to the Twin Cities, more populated area. So again, Twin Cities, everyone in that area in Washita Parish, you need to be uh, just paying attention to this. This is your call to action. We've been telling you, we've given you plenty of lead time at this point that uh, dangerous storms are heading your way. So again, uh, this area of circulation, especially in Jackson Parish, has been holding together. The ones up towards the north have been kind of flip-flopping and, and, and going back and forth here where they're more smaller and kind of spinning up, but they're certainly there. There's certainly something going on in uh, portions of uh, Lincoln Parish. So, again, uh, kind of a little bit of a tightening on the one in Jackson, possibly here, but again, uh, broad circulation here, and you can see it's uh, strong enough to where you can see it. So, Again, uh, getting close to the Ears community, uh, pretty close there. And I'm going to zoom in on some streets. Uh, there's the Oak Ridge community. It's pretty much right over the Oak Ridge community as we speak. So you folks need to be in your safe place now. Hopefully you've been in your safe place for uh, for a while now. So again, broad rotation heading over in that area. And uh, going to be getting closer to the Ears community shortly here. Then it'll be eventually tracking into portions of Washita Parish. So. Sheer rate increasing along the Washita-Lincoln line. 
uh, from our live radar. Uh, Shear increasing uh, uh, really all across Lincoln Parish and, uh, and, and into eastern sections of uh, uh, the, the parish and even into northeastern sections of Jackson Parish. That's a, a look at the new uh, kind of radar mode that we switched to. We switched to another severe weather uh, dual uh, uh, um, uh, radar mode. So that has uh, a little bit better look at some of the, some of the wind signatures that we're seeing here. Yeah, definitely, certainly Boeing segments on here. Now it looks like just east of Shudrant um, as that passes through, but you're seeing where this uh, starts to kind of wind up. That's where we're seeing those circulations here, and especially down towards the south near the Aris area. You can see, again, very, uh, some very defined red colorings, some very defined green colorings. Right in the middle is where that circulation is going to be. So, again, tracking itself into Washita Parish eventually, and again, uh, even if you don't have that possibility of seeing a, a, a tornado per se, damaging straight line winds are certainly going to be an issue as the storm progresses. It looks like they actually just dropped the tornado warning for the one in Jackson Parish, so there's some good news there. I think it expired at 11.15. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see a new warning coming out with that one. Uh, but again, that's a damaging wind signature nonetheless. You can see the little curl there on the northern edge, uh, Brian, uh, to the southwest oh, of, yeah. uh, or to the northwest of Eureka, uh, outside, yeah, right uh, outside of, east of Douglas. Um, and that's in the, the Shudrant Douglas areas uh, to the north and east. You can see that little twist. That may be a new area and a new possible tornado developing right there. Right there. So let's see. I'll zoom in a little bit closer. See new tornado warning out. This is for Lincoln, Washita, and Union Parishes. Severe thunderstorm capable of producing both tornadoes and extensive straight line winds located 12 miles south of Farmerville moving uh, or 13 miles east of Ruston moving east at 40 miles per hour. So there's your new tornado warning. It does include much of the northern half of Washita Parish. It includes Sterlington. Uh, it does not include Monroe, West Monroe proper, but you can see that, that little spin up to the west of the Smyrny community, south of Downsville. Uh, that is the, that's the area that has prompted the tornado warning. Yeah, we're seeing pretty much right just to the southwest of Downville. Downsville. You folks need to be in your tornado safe place right now. Looks like the community of Torellis. Ter uh, you folks, again, need to be up in your tornado safe place. Um, Looks like, uh, again, just northern portions Ra of Washita Parish. Radar's here. hitting at 853 feet right there, Brian, so that's low. That's a very, that's very low rotation. Practically surface base. So we're getting a very good look at what this storm is doing at the surface, which at the end of the day is the most important thing that we look for is what's happening at the surface here. So, again, a very, very tight area of rotation that's being picked up here by our live storm tracker Doppler radar as it clips northern portions of Washita Parish. Again, Sterlington is in this warning as well. So if you know folks in Sterlington, um, give them a call. Let them know that a dangerous storm is on their way. Get into your tornado safe place as soon as possible as uh, this area of circulation moving very, very quickly off towards the north and east. So um, again, folks in Sterlington, northern portions of Washita Parish, portions of, uh, southern portions of Union Parish, and even a little uh, portion of Jackson Parish as well. You guys need to be in your tornado safe place. Yeah, you see, you can start seeing kind of a, a little curl nature in that, in that tornado signature. Uh, that's moving into northern, se southern sections of Union Parish. Uh, you, it, it, it curls back up, and, and just to put a point of reference on this, and to kind of put it all in perspective for you, I'm going to switch between two different modes real quick. There's a look at what it, what the radar looks like. Uh, in traditional uh, velocities, uh, reflectivities mode, and there is, you can almost see this little curl back to the west, and that's where we're looking for a possible tornadic signature, and, and there it is, still moving to the north and east. I'm going to zoom in real close on this, and then we're going to switch over to the tower cam and uh, see what we can see from that out to the west. We're, we're going to be probably a little too far to the east to see anything. But the Downsville and Smyrny communities, uh, Torellis, and then uh, Boy Scout Camp Roads over here on the right-hand side. This is Highway uh, uh, 552. The Point community back behind me, too. Uh, McLeod Road, and uh, you can see Highway 552 kind of winds its way back to the east there. Here's Williams Road, and this is the area we're looking at right here. And then also, even a little bit back to the south and west a little bit, even into far eastern sections of Lincoln Parish, there's still a little bit of an area 
area there. Uh, zooming back out, that leading line of damaging wind gusts stretches all the way down to I-20 and even points farther southward. And keep in mind, we've had tornadic signatures embedded within that particular part of the line as well. So uh, zooming out across the, the uh, area to put a better perspective, there's the tornado warning that stretches back to the north and east. Farmerville, Sterlington, here's Highway 165, here's I-20, and 165 stretching down toward Caldwell Parish, 425 back up here on the north left hand, right hand side of the screen, 167 uh, on the left hand side of your screen. There's our damaging wind signature. You can see the, the, the stronger, bolder green colors starting to surge eastward. And uh, I'm going to switch over to our tower cam just to see if we can see anything back out to the west. And nothing. Uh, but one thing that you can see, uh, as, you, as you see a lot of these, uh, you can note the cloud cover streaming off to the north very quickly. Strong, low-level winds uh, will feed these storms as they continue to move north and east. And we'll keep an eye on that tower cam shot just in case uh, there's anything out there that you folks need to see uh, over the next uh, couple of uh, minutes as it, this storm moves a little bit closer to our area. So again, uh, we'll, we'll be watching that uh, tower cam, but more importantly right now is the, the damaging wind potential that's entering Washita Parish. This is a highly populated area from Monroe, West Monroe, back toward Calhoun, Sterlington, uh, northward eventually toward Bastrop. The tornado warning itself does not include the city of Farmerville, but damaging winds will be stretching from generally south of Farmerville all the way to the I-20 corridor and even parts farther south within that. Iris and Chatham seeing some heavy rain, some heavy thunderstorm activity right now. And that also doesn't even include the severe thunderstorm warnings that are in place. We're just highlighting the tornado warnings because there are so many severe thunderstorm warnings it tends to kind of clog up the map and make things look really cluttered and it defeats the purpose of trying to disseminate so much information. But along this leading line, if you're anywhere within that line, damaging wind gusts will be possible. And you will continue to keep an eye on this leading line of storms as it moves now into western Washita Parish and will move right over. This is our radar site right here. Uh, so this is the West Monroe Studios, and this will just move right over the top of us. We're going to get a good look at it. Uh, again, the northern edge of this uh, area of rotation uh, is still there as, uh, as the radar starts to kind of... Uh, pick up a little feedback from these storms as it moves a little bit closer to our region. Anything from the National Weather Service uh, lately? Uh, no, not as, as of right now, but they were just saying like the new tornado warning on the storm moving through Downsville, the one that we're paying attention to, will be passing south of Sarmaville, heading across southern portions of Union Parish, which is basically what Jared was touching up on. And it looks like the tornado warning in Lincoln Parish has expired. Okay, so uh, a little bit of good news, that, uh, that tornado warning that we had. Uh, for the Chatham areas areas uh, has been allowed to expire. Uh, the leading line of storms continues to surge eastward and we'll still be watching these little notches within the line uh, for possible little uh, spin up tornadoes. Uh, and, and the one thing I want to stress, spin up doesn't need necessarily mean weak. Spin up just means quickly developing. So that's another thing that folks need to keep in mind is that uh, just because it's a spin up within the line doesn't mean that it is a, a weak tornado. We can still see some very long lived circulations within that line uh, as, as these things continue to move east. And again, we, we're going to get a good look at this storm uh, moving over the West Monroe Studios here shortly. Uh, we are not technically in that tornado warning, but we are uh, going to see that, that damaging wind signature. And you can still see that area of rotation uh, and, and just that kind of backwards uh, looking little hook, that little bookend vortices that sometimes can develop. Uh, you can, uh, again, see Highway 552. Here's the Will Height community. Here's the Point community. Here's Rocky Branch Road and the Rocky Branch community. Uh, so all of this will continue to move eastward and eventually will move toward Wall Lake and the northern sections of Washita Parish, maybe a little bit farther northward than that. So if you're in these areas, again, proper tornado precautions as the radar will give us another sweep here. And uh, nothing really changing with that particular sweep. Uh, in our general area. So uh, again, the tornado warning remains in effect, but the, the most important thing right now is the damaging wind swath that's going to be uh, headed into Washita Parish. And this is kind of your last chance uh, as the storms are, start arriving here in Washita Parish to start cha charging your wireless devices. If you lose power in your particular area, keep in mind that we are on Facebook Live, the exact same stream that you're seeing here, albeit about 40 seconds delayed or so because of internet and technology. But uh, uh, we will be there uh, until the last storm clears uh, the Arklamas. But again, uh, this tornado warning not only just advertising the potential of a, of a tornado, but also advertising the possibility of some strong to damaging wind gusts over the next uh, 30 minutes.
Yeah, so again, we're coming up at just about 6, 5 minutes till 11.30, and we've been pretty much on the air since that first warning was just outside of our ears sometime around it. Eight, just around 9 o'clock this morning. So we've been watching this for over the last couple of hours. Did start off in western Texas, and these storms did have history of producing uh, confirmed tornadoes on the ground. But at this time, it looks like uh, we're not seeing anything confirmed at this time. But again, that warning that was issued was issued for the uh, possibility of both. Uh, uh, it did have a history of uh, both tornadoes and extensive damaging straight line winds. So that's why that warning was issued. It, again, does not include the city of Monroe. It does not include Bastrop, but it does include Sterlington and Farmerville. So uh, just make sure you guys are still in your... Uh your safety places until this warning expired. And I do believe it goes until 1145, if I'm correct, uh, somewhere around that time frame. So that's that pretty much right, yeah. what we are seeing. Rain's starting to pick up here at the West Monroe Studios. Nothing overly heavy right now, but right. Uh, the, the rain will start to... And that's the other thing. Don't try to see anything uh, with these storms. Don't try to, to, to get visual of a tornado. Don't try to get visual of damage. Don't try to get visual of the, of the wind gusts. Just be in your safe place. Uh, it, it, it's so simple today because everybody generally is at home anyway because of what's going on across the country with this pandemic. Just be, be home. Stay where you are. Listen to the warnings. Find your safe place when you need to. And, uh, and like I said, uh, in general, this should be a, a limited traffic day. It's Easter Sunday, so, uh, and, and you're not really supposed to be going anywhere, so the roads should be generally clear. Uh, so just kind of stay where you are, ride this thing out, and, uh, and, and we'll wait for these storms to clear through uh, the, the entire area. Yeah, exactly. And, and just, uh, you know, make sure you're keeping in touch with family and friends uh, if they need anything or just make sure that they are aware that there's a warning in a place for them. And again, this is just for northern portions of Washita Paris. Again, does not include the Twin Cities, although right now we're starting to hear the rainfall begin to pick up and maybe the possibility of some strong winds. But again, the reason why this warning was issued for the fact that this storm system did have a history of producing both tornadoes and extensive uh, straight line winds. So that's why it was issued. So let's go ahead and pull up. Let me see here. Let's go ahead and pull up the uh, velocity and see what it's looking like right now. Storm relative velocity, here we go. Uh, not looking as grand, so might be seeing some good news there, but either way, the potential for strong damaging winds is still there, although we will continue to watch this. Again, it, like we said before, it did have a history of producing tornadoes, so we'll continue to watch that. Now it looks like that warning has shrunk a little bit, so there is some good news to that. It might, actually might be um, it canceled a little bit early, but again, there is still an active warning for uh, that area. Again, we still see a little bit of red and green, maybe some potential uh, uh, velocity map right there. Kind of see a little dark spot right there, but let's go ahead and take a look at the shear here. Kind of see what we're seeing. Again, not looking as grand, but again, you can see that strong straight line winds that is moving across the central portions of the Arkhamus as we speak. So, uh, either way, just make sure you are still in your uh, safe places until you are given uh, the all clear. All right, thanks, Lexi. And again, to kind of recap, Tornado Watch remains in effect for um, a good chunk of the eastern parts of the Arkhamus until 8 o'clock tonight. And there is the outside chance, and, and I will say this, that the forecast had a lot of moving pieces in it as, as, as everything continued to move east. And while I kind of go through my spiel here, I just want to kind of uh, to reset us on the live radar. Uh, we're going to lose our, not lose our radar, but we are going to be very limited on radar power soon. And in fact, I think it's already happening. Uh, as the heavy rain moves over our radar site, uh, attenuation happens. Basically, the rain's just so heavy in that immediate area around our radar that uh, it limits its power. It limits how far that radar beam can get out and measure and survey other parts of the storm. So uh, that's where we're going to see some limitations. Uh, in, in terms of radar power, but we're going to keep it on, keep it on this one uh, for just a little bit longer. But for folks that are, are, are waiting for a secondary severe weather threat, there is an outside chance of a of a secondary round of severe weather mid to late afternoon into early evening as the dry line surges eastward, a part of this very dynamic storm system. And there is the outside chance of some additional damaging wind gusts and hail at that point. And that's a threat that we'll really reassess 
once this particular cluster of storms moves through. And to be honest with you, a lot of this activity may work the atmosphere over to a point where that threat is a little bit more limited later today. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. But uh, at this point, nobody can really uh, let their guard down, so to speak, or, or start relaxing. As you can see, this area of rotation starts to pulse back up a little bit across northern sections of uh, Washita Parish and into southern Union Parish. Actually, this is southern Union Parish, where you see this area of rotation that is uh, picked back up here in the last um, I would say two or three radar swipes and just bouncing from different radar modes to different radar modes to see what's going on with it. I don't know if our radar velocity can actually get out. Yeah, there it is. Uh, an area of rotation that continues to strengthen now uh, moving into southern uh, portions of Union Parish. I'm going to zoom in on this one pretty closely. Um, looks as though, Brian and Lexi, that this, this really started to kind of uh, pulse up here more recently. Uh, this looks like Ruggs Bluff Road. Uh, this is Rocky Branch Road. Here's the Rocky Branch Community and Highway 2 that winds its way towards Sterlington. But this area right here has started to kind of spin up briefly and uh, showing some signs of uh, organization and some rotation. Yeah, in fact, the National Weather Service actually did just point that out. It says the best area of rotation is still in Southern Union Parish, southeast of Farmerville. And they say we are watching the line closely coming through Monroe, watching that for tightening, but not seeing development of a tornado for Washita Parish. But either way, that potential for tornadoes is still there. But at this time, they're may more paying attention to that area of rotation you were just pointing out, Jared. Okay. Uh, here's a look at our tower cam. This is why you shouldn't be outside. It is almost impossible to see anything that would be rain-wrapped, uh, any spin up tornado uh, anything that happens very quickly would be impossible to see winds uh, and I'm just looking at treetops here in the distance it doesn't look like winds are overly uh, 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 problematic you can see the uh, American flag there at the Ike Hamilton Expo Center that's whipping so uh, maybe some 20 25 mile an hour winds uh, so far sustained as this line moves through but we haven't seen uh, over any overly aggressive wind gusts yet here at the West Monroe studios uh, so a little bit of good news there. But again, back to that area of rotation, really tightening up now uh, as you move into Southern Union Parish. Uh, you can see those stronger winds on the back edge. Uh, and I, I don't want to say a tornado is imminent, but uh, this is a, a very strong area of rotation. And keep in mind also, our radar is shooting through a lot of mm -hmm. heavy rainfall. And for it to still be able to see something so distinctly, uh, that is concerning. Leading, lead, uh, leading line still continuing to produce problems in another area of reds and greens starting to come together in southern portions of Washita Parish near Richwood. Uh, any word of uh, what that could be and, and what uh, we're actually picking up from that? Because this looks to be an area that's, uh, that's wrapping up pretty quickly um, in the southern parts of the parish. It's kind of on the back edge, and uh, our radar is struggling to see it because of all the heavy rain in our in our radar site. Yeah, they haven't really pointed out anything for uh, for Washtenaw Parish just yet, but yeah, d definitely something there, to keep yeah. an eye on. Yeah, there's there we go, right, right there. there. All right, so so now there's two areas of rotation that we now ha we have to watch very very closely. The National Weather Service uh, radar in Shreveport's picking up here and here. So I'm going to zoom back out just a smidge and uh, get both of these. All right, so they, there they are, one and two. And I'm going to switch over to our radar and see if we can get a better look at that. Yeah, Lexi, you may want to go out to the front entryway and look south. I will. <laughs> okay. Turn your mic off. Um, all right. So, uh, again, I want to switch uh, different radar modes here and try to get the best look at both of these areas of rotation. Brian, there they are, man. Uh, it, it, one right here. The reds and greens very, very well pronounced here. And then the south of, uh, southwest of Monroe. That's moving east, but it could wobble to the north and east. So Monroe, West Monroe, you've got to keep an eye on that southern edge of, uh, of rotation there. Uh, that, that's a uh, little kink in the line that can pop up so quickly. Yeah, it's uh, right here on the back edge moving to the north and east. So, so that's, that's concerning too. Yeah, especially folks on the south side of Monroe need to be paying attention to that. Be in your safe place. The storm is dangerous enough as it is. I mean, there's no official warning on it, but what we're seeing is something that developed rather quickly. So again, folks need to be paying attention just uh, and, and getting into your safe place. Hey, you what? There's another one right here in northern sections of Washita Parish that's starting to kind of curl up on us too. Um, and that's what this line did uh, earlier in the in, in its life cycle, Shreveport Bozier area, it had lined up with about four or five different circulations along that leading line. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Made a warning coming for uh, for uh, 
portions of Washita Parish, and it will include Monroe. All right, so that's going to be your new tornado warning that's going to include downtown Monroe. Uh, this is your call to action. We, we've been telling you folks for a while that these storms were knocking on our door and they were headed our direction. So this is your, this is your time to act. Get in your safe place, uh, interior portion of your home away from windows and doors. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Brian, we're really starting to see this thing twist in real quick, and uh, I'll get back to our radar screen shortly. So, uh, yeah, the, uh, the official warning has gone out. People should be getting the alerts on their phones as we speak. Uh, again, this is the circulation that we've been keeping an eye out on for the last couple minutes now. The official warning is out. All right, so. this warning is actually just to the southwest of our radar site. Um, all right, okay. Um, that's the area of rotation we're seeing here. Just out of our cone of silence, maybe by about two miles or so to the north and east. Um, all right, so this, this is our area right here. Moving to the north and east Monroe and West Monroe. Uh, Cody, if we could go ahead and get all of our other folks uh, from outside the building into the safe places, uh, this is going to move close enough to us that uh, we're going to have to kind of keep an eye on it. Uh, if we could tilt the, the tower cam back out to the south, uh, we can't see anything anyway. All right. Um, that, so, so this is, Lexi, what would you see outside? Did you see anything, Lexi? Did you see anything outside? Yes. So basically, I was looking out uh, uh, towards the west. Turn your mic back on. Yep. Yeah, so basically as I was looking out towards the west from the front of the TV station, you could kind of see the rain beginning to wrap just a little bit. So there's some kind of wind, strong winds blowing across the area. You guys go ahead and get in the hallway. Okay. In the safe place. And okay. um, yeah, Cody, you need to go there too. Um, and we're just going to hang out right here uh, for just a little bit and watch this storm. Uh, like I said, um, and uh, if anybody could remind them to mute their microphones when they get down there, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, but there's our area of potential rotation as the winds continue to pick up here at the West Monroe Studios. Uh, just stick with me for here for a second. Just, just listening to what's going on outside. Um, and, and trying to take a look at our tower cam along the way just to see what we can see. Uh, and again, you can see the heavy rainfall wrapping in here at the West Monroe Studios. So again, this tower cam is, is basically a, a moot point uh, and, and we can't really see anything. There's our area of rotation to the south. Uh, there was the area of rotation here to the south of Richwood as well, trailing to the northeast. That, that area of rotation has become a little bit more disorganized and diffuse uh, here in the last uh, two or three radar swipes. Now, again, we're on our live storm tracker Doppler radar. We're going to get data every minute, and this is updating as you see it. And I don't want to spend all of our time on this, especially considering we still have a very violent area of rotation uh, here uh, to the south and east of Farmerville. Uh, most of our uh, areas here uh, is kind of sandwiched on the Farmerville uh, on Highway 2 between Farmerville and Sterlington. Uh, there's an area of rotation here that is strong and continuing to wrap up and remain very violent there. And I want to go ahead and zoom in uh, on a closer part of the screen as um, most of these locations continue to produce some very heavy winds. Rocky Branch Road, here's Acre Road, and the Crossroads community. Here's State Highway 2, uh, and it winds its way back to the east towards Sterlington. Burlington. But uh, again, you can see this area right here that is concerning. It is within that tornado warning. Get into your safe place, interior portion of your home, away from windows and doors. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Also starting to see another area of very strong winds uh, kind of maxing out here on the radar screen in the northern sections of Washita Parish. This is Old Wall Lake Road. Here's Levy Drive and eventually we'll be moving into northern sections of Monroe. So here's the Cross Lake community. Here's North Monroe and 165, Chauvin Estates, and then eventually you move toward downtown Monroe. But this area here in the Wall Lake community points farther to the north and east. You're kind of sandwiched between those two tornado warnings, but uh, again, uh, a very concerning area. The other concerning area that we've been watching generally just to the south of our radar site here, uh, and we're talking a few hundred feet, if that, in the atmosphere in the Brownsville, Balcomville communities, there's an area of rotation here that again is also very discerning disconcerting uh, for these particular areas. So uh, again, 
uh, looking at the radar, it would be impossible to see a possible tornado in these areas. So you need to be in your safe place now, interior portion of your home away from windows and doors. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Zooming out, you can see those reds and greens coming together rather aggressively. Our uh, rotation up here in the central portions of Union Parish has become a little bit more disorganized, but we're starting to see more activity kind of sandwiched between those two uh, uh, tornado warnings out over Sterlington and points farther southward than that. Again, just uh, kind of going to check out uh, what we're seeing from the National Weather Service. Uh, again, that storm continuing to cross, cross everybody uh, over the I-20 corridor. Um, generally just seeing that the tornado warning will continue to... Um, yeah, strong rotation tightening over West Monroe. So there, there's our area of rotation that continues to intensify, uh, that is uh, causing some concern. Also, again, this northern edge of storms uh, is south of Sterlington, that is causing some concern as well. Here's our area of rotation as it continues to move east, now moving into downtown Monroe, West Monroe. A tornado is possible, if not imminent, with this storm, now moving into southern sections of West Monroe. And we're fixing to get really close in here. Here's Coleman Avenue. This is the Brownsville, Balkanville communities. This is Ridge Drive, and everything points eastward. So, uh, again, South Grand Street will be crossing the Washita River into southern sections of Monroe here shortly. Alabama Street, your state streets over here, Gordon Avenue, Polk Street, and you can see Tony Bayou down here on the, set, uh, the bottom right hand side of your screen. I'm going to zoom back out and simply so I can give myself a little bit better point of reference on uh, where this storm is moving. But we'll be moving into downtown West Monroe um, shortly. And uh, there's our area. There's another area of rotation crossing I-20, uh, and we'll eventually move into uh, this is the Texas Avenue area and South 4th Street. Here's I-20. Here's the Stella Mill exit. Uh, we'll be moving north and then back out to the east. Here's Mill Haven uh, and, and other parts of uh, Monroe and West Monroe out toward Pecanland Mall is uh, out here on the backhand side, right-hand side of your screen. Here's Kansas Lane. And again, 165 winding right uh, through the northern part of town here. Uh, Texas Avenue, the uh, Briard Street. Here's North 2nd in Mon uh, West Monroe. And uh, North 5th Street and a lot of the surrounding areas. So we're starting to get into parts of Monroe as well. In fact, this area of rotation will be crossing into Monroe and West, uh, out of West Monroe here in the next, I would say, five to 10 minutes. Call to action now. You should have been in your safe place 20 minutes ago. This tornado warning had been out uh, only briefly, but uh, the other concerning part is the fact that we are looking at straight line damaging winds and then also another area of rotation that looks to be south generally of Sterlington. This area right here uh, along Highway 165, still in the warning polygon, but some very strong winds associated with it. I'm going to bounce back over to our uh, normal radar um, uh, look and uh, our traditional reflectivities mode, and you can see how rain-wrapped that area is. Don't wait. Act now. Be in your safe place, interior portion of your home, away from windows and doors. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Starting to see that area of rotation as it moves eastward into uh, downtown Monroe, West Monroe. Again, safe place now, interior portion of your home, away from windows and doors. Uh, and again, lowest level of your home. Uh, there is uh, apparently... A tree down on a home in the 400 block of Brown Street as the lights start flickering here in West Monroe. Uh, we have two confirmed tornadoes now on the ground uh, in this uh, particular area. An observed tornado uh, con 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 considered extremely large and dangerous, located over Sterlington, moving near Schwartz at northeast at 45 miles per hour. This is a particularly dangerous situation from northeastern sections of Washita Parish. A tornado has been confirmed on the ground near Swartz, moving to the east. So again, if you're in these areas in Monroe, West Monroe, you want to be in your safe place now. Here's our confirmed tornado, now moving to the north and east. Uh, tornado debris signature has been noticed on the ULM radar. Uh, so here is our uh, possible tornado. I'll get back to it in just a second. But uh, again, uh, this is a confirmed tornado on the ground. You can see the downstream warning that has just been issued for parts of uh, 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 Morehouse Parish and also uh, into portions of East Carroll and West Carroll parishes. So here's our, our tornado on the ground in and around the, the Swartz area in uh, northeastern sections of Washtenaw Parish, out near the airport, moving to the north and east. So here's Eastwood Estates, Rowland Road, and Millhaven Estates. Here's Millhaven uh, and the Pecanland Mall exit. You can can see an area of rotation here 
Uh, and that is, again, a confirmed tornado to moving to the north and east. We'll be moving out of uh, sections of Monroe, West Monroe shortly. We'll be moving into eastern sections of... Um, of Washtenaw Parish eventually toward the Crew Lake communities, start communities in uh, parts of uh, Richland Parish. Zooming back out to the north, another uh, area of concern, uh, that possible tornado, and again, I'm kind of bouncing back and forth between uh, getting new information from the National Weather Service, but we have two confirmed tornadoes on the ground uh, in Washita Parish at this hour, at least according to the National Weather Service. So uh, again, if you're in these areas, these are two radar-confirmed tornadoes in Washita Parish. Uh, again, safe place, interior portion of your home, away from windows and doors, put as many walls between you in the outside as possible. This is the real deal. Uh, confirmed radar tornadoes mean that uh, the radar has indicated uh, debris being lofted and uh, that is being detected on radar. So again, this is a very, very messy, very messy radar screen and a lot to point out. But a possible tornado, uh, now a radar confirmed tornado moving out of eastern sections of Monroe will be uh, continuing to move to the northeast into the Swartz community. And then also another confirmed tornado south of Sterlington. This will be moving, uh, look, looking at the Frenchman's Bend communities and uh, maybe a little bit farther southward than that. Uh, if you're in these areas, you want to get into your safe place now, interior portion of your home away from windows and doors, put as many walls between between you and the outside as possible. Here's the Fairbanks community. You can see uh, the, 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 a lot of the, the, suburb, the, the uh, outlying areas of Northern Monroe uh, and North Monroe. Here's Sterlington and Highway 2. Here's our possible tornado. Uh, so again, if you're in these areas, make a phone call. Let people know what's going on. We also have, again, the radar confirmed tornado. Uh, out of uh, the Swartz area, moving north and east. So if you're in those areas, again, proper tornado precautions. A uh, downstream tornado warning has been issued basically to encompass both of these circulations moving east into Richland, West Carroll, and Morehouse parishes. But all of this will move east, and uh, again, these are radar confirmed. I want to switch over really quickly uh, to our uh, shear button out of the, the National Weather Service radar in Shreveport, and you can see the very strong winds associated with this as it continues to move to the east. Most of these storms will continue to move very violently to the east, producing damaging wind potential. Here's a look at our, our, our shear button out of, the net, out of our radar, our live storm tracker radar, and you can see uh, the, the stronger wind areas of rotation uh, right here, uh, now moving out of uh, Washita Parish, and then, or will be moving out of Washita Parish as we start uh, seeing the power flickers here uh, at the West Monroe Studios. And another area of rotation, again, uh, south of Monroe. Radar still trying to kind of keep up with so much going on in our area, considering uh, the fact that a lot of these uh, storms, quite frankly, are uh, still moving at a, a very rapid pace to the east. It does uh, uh, create some, some discrepancies in aerial coverage from, from swipe to swipe. Uh, as they move to the east, you're, you're starting to see a lot of these storms uh, race at a little bit faster pace. Again, looking at the areas of rotation, as they get very, very cluttered uh, from the southwest of Bastrop, there's a, a new area of rotation here, and then to the south uh, of Sterlington along 165. That's also a very violent area of rotation. But this area right here is going to move to the northeast of Bastrop, Collinston, uh, toward Bastrop, Collinston, Bastrop, Marouge. All you need to be in your safe place now, you are under a tornado warning. That tornado warning, I believe, goes until 1245. But again, that is an active uh, area of rotation, a possible tornado that could be imminent moving to the north and east, Bastrop, Marouge, Collinston. Again, keep that in mind. For folks farther southward, out of Monroe and towards Swartz, and now moving into portions of uh, Richland and Morehouse parishes, we still have an active tornado warning for you folks. That was a radar confirmed tornado at one point. Uh, now uh, that that area of rotation seems to have lofted a little bit. Everything will continue to move east, but uh, stretching at, back out across uh, the entire region, uh, again, very damaging, uh, a very um, wide-encompassing area of storms. Again, uh, tornado emergency now has been, area, has been issued uh, for areas east of Monroe. Uh, there is a confirmed tornado debris signature north of I-20, east of Monroe, and south of Swartz. So this is, again, now a tornado emergency for Washita Parish. Um, this is, again, north of I-20, and here's our 
confirmed radar confirmed tornado on the ground uh, just north of Highway 80. And I'm going to start spitting out some more roads. This is a, again, radar confirmed tornado. Uh, this is the Stubbs Watson area, uh, Stubbs Ritchie Road, and Rowland Road. This is the Swartz community, all right here. And this is what we're looking at is actually two different areas one here and then one here. But both of those are very, very violent areas of circulation. A radar-confirmed tornado on the ground in these areas, uh, moving to the north and east. So again, if you haven't gotten to your safe place, get there now. Uh, and I would venture to say this is our area of rotation, north of the interstate, uh, in the Swartz community. Ray, uh, Roland Road it is generally just to the south of you folks, moving to the north and east. Uh, again, the rest of uh, Sawyer Road, Stubbs Ritchie Road, Green Road's here to the bottom right-hand side of the bottom of your screen. Here's Highway 80, and where it meets up with Desired Street, um, uh, uh, farther down uh, its life cycle. But then it also here's Airport Avenue, Desired Street. So you can see the rest of Monroe and West Monroe uh, on the left-hand side of your screen. Joe White Road that kind of winds back down to the south and east. But here's our area of rotation moving to the north and east. Sawyer Road, you need to be in your safe place now. All of these areas in the Swartz community, you need to be in your safe place. Proper tornado precautions away from windows doors lowest uh, level of your home put as many walls between you and the outside as possible I know it sounds elementary but it, you're basically playing hide and seek from a tornado and you want as much protection as possible if you can grab a helmet throw some shoes on and uh, make sure you carry your mobile device just in case you um, you lose uh, power we will be carrying this on uh, our Facebook pages on myarclimist.com as well so again uh, you, you can pick up uh, our, our signal as long as we stay on the air we'll be right here with you but uh, again the, the look at the wind signatures and again there's very very violent kinks in the line here uh, one to the southwest of Bastrop moving to the north and east and then again the uh, the radar confirmed tornado that's moving out of um, uh, eastern sections of Washtenaw Parish and will be moving into Richland Parish shortly it looks as though that circulation may have weakened a little bit, uh, in the, that embedded circulation, but right back here, again, a leading edge, all that uh, moving off to the north and east. Uh, most of these areas under already under tornado warning, so you need to act now. Get into your safe place, and uh, you should have been there uh, a while back, probably a good 30 minutes ago, as these storms have continued to move through. Again, cannot stress this enough that we have had a radar, con two different radar-confirmed tornadoes on the ground in portions of Washtenaw Parish. Uh, the new, uh, uh, also a side note, uh, tornado watch will be ex uh, extended beyond uh, the, the noon time frame uh, for a good chunk of our area. So again, uh, I-20-165 points farther eastward. We do have a confirmed tornado on the ground, or we had a radar confirmed tornado on the ground. Be in your safe place now. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible to keep, uh, keep yourself safe. All right, just uh, kind of hollering down the hallway to our folks to get uh, Brian and Lexi back in. I think the, the, the immediate tornado threat has passed uh, the West Monroe area, but uh, most of these locations continuing to produce some very, very heavy rainfall. And bringing Lexi and Brian back up to speed, uh, we have had in the last... 20 minutes, two different radar confirmed tornadoes in Washita Parish. One near the Swartz area moving east. Uh, that area of rotation has seemed to have lifted just a little bit, but two confirmed tornadoes based off of uh, debris signatures east southeast of Sterlington and then one south of Stor Swartz north on I 20. So we still have two radar confirmed tornadoes in these general areas. One to the southeast of Sterlington, one just north of I 20 near Swartz moving east. So uh, again, just kind of bringing uh, the rest of the weather staff back up to speed. But uh, uh, for these areas, again, radar confirmed tornadoes on the ground, and those rotation signatures have been very well pronounced at times. Here's our area uh, southeast of Sterlington, uh, continuing to move to the north and east. Collinston, Marouge, Bastrop, all need to keep an eye on that storm. And then north of I-20, east of 165, we still have an area uh, of radar confirmed tornado uh, moving to the north and east. Uh, that will move into portions of Richland Parish and also Southern Morehouse Parish later on in its life cycle. We've seen some very intense wind, wind signatures at times. There's our area of rotation. And then back out to the north, again, it gets a little bit messier as you move into these general directions. But uh, to kind of put it in perspective, uh, two radar-confirmed tornadoes basically means that, uh, that these storms have produced enough debris that 
that uh, the tornadoes themselves have produced enough debris to uh, confirm the, that the tornado was on the ground at some point. Again, there is a tornado emergency now out for portions of Washita Parish uh, until, I believe, 1230. So yes, uh, very dangerous weather passing through the Twin Cities even as we speak. Now getting into eastern portions of the Twin Cities here as we have that tornado emergency in progress and we also have a couple other tornado warnings as well. You can see, do not try to go outside to see anything. As blinding rainfall is occurring with this, anything that is occurring is wrapped in rainfall. So folks, just make sure that you are in your tornado safe place. We had to do that just a second ago with storms that moved over our area. So again, make sure you are in your safe place as these storms continue to push off into uh, portions of Washita Parish here, getting into Richland Parish and eventually into the uh, the West and East Carroll Parish regions as well. More line, the storms continues off towards the south, but at least right now, the uh, area of focus here is the uh, concentration of storms along and north of I-20. Again, a couple radar confirmed tornadoes. We've seen some debris balls as well. So again, very dangerous storms moving through the eastern portions of the Twin City Metro uh, for a lack of better terms here. Rayville, you folks are going to be starting to see some of this activity. Again, you're not in a tornado warning, but you're in the dangerous portion of the line where a spin-up can happen pretty quickly. So just take that into account. Folks in Bastrop should have been in their tornado safe place a while ago. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer to see some of these uh, communities here. Epps, you are in the warning. You have plenty of lead time. Get in your tornado safe place now um, a little bit uh, closer view here if I can get it down into here again uh, some of these roads you know getting in into the areas into Collinston and, 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 uh, and, uh, and uh, portions on that note Brian also that it should be noted that the National Weather Service uh, we're, we're going to we'll be switching National Weather Service offices once we cross out of Washita Parish National Weather Service in Jackson will pick up these storms from there they will issue warnings they've already issued that one warning for northern Richland much of Morehouse Parish and West Carroll Parish that goes until 1245. So yes, folks, you have plenty of time to get into your safe place. Again, it's that area on radar that you're seeing just south of Bass Strip that's really starting to curve up here. It's those spin-ups that form along that damaging straight line winds occurring as well with this storm. So as it pushes east into portions of Morehouse, Richland, and eventually West Carroll parishes here, uh, again, folks in Oak Grove, this is your this is your call to action. You folks need to be uh, keeping an eye out on this line of storms as it moves through. It's twisting up near Bass Strip too. Yep, folks in Bass Strip calling. Winston, Marouge, you folks need to be in your safe place now. This is, a, this is a, uh, a tornado emergency issue for the area. So again, National Weather Service does not issue those lightly. And uh, with the conditions that we've been seeing so far, uh, not surprising that they issued it. Notice the circulation just south of Collinston. That one's starting to tighten up here. And it's right along the northern end here of this road. So I believe that's 554. It's hard to see from here. But uh, folks along Highway uh, 554, Upland, uh, some of those communities. There's Bastrop proper right there. And again, you folks are in the tornado warning. So make sure you are taking the necessary precautions. Make sure you are in the lowest room, interior room, away from windows. And uh, again, make, make sure you wear a helmet and, uh, and get everything ready to take shelter as uh, these dangerous storms start to push their way eastward. Again, there's Oak Grove. There's Epps. Epps is officially in the warning Oak Grove. You still have plenty of time to get into your safe place. But again, this is mainly for extreme eastern portions of Washita Parish here, heading into Morehouse Parish and uh, portions of Rich Richland Parish as well. So yeah, we're coming up on just about four minutes till noon, and yeah, so this kind of really did kind of pick up just a little bit, and I mean, it, it really got uh, kind of so so kind of spun up real quick that you know Jerison, Brian, and I out into the hallway with the production crew. So again, still a tornado emergency at this time that continues until 12:30, and we, that's exactly what we're seeing on our uh, our velocity map here. Again, now it looks like uh, Monroe is completely out of that tornado warning. So again, you can guys can kind of start to come out of your uh, sh shelters if you would like, but. Again, Again, Sterlington still under that warning. Uh, Collingston, Bastrop is still under this warning. And again, like uh, Jeremy was mentioning before, as we transition out of Washtenaw Paris, the National Weather Service in Jackson, Mississippi is going to be picking up on that as well. 
And the folks in Swartz especially need to be paying attention to that circulation currently going into that vicinity as well. So, uh, you know, again, hopefully you folks in Swartz have been in your safe places for a little while. But uh, again, a particularly dangerous area of circulation passing in that vicinity. So those folks really need to be in their safe places. Eventually it will push eastward. But again, if you're north and east of the Swartz area, if that sounds familiar, make sure you are in your tornado safe place now. Yeah, get to the centermost uh, part of your house. Get away from all windows. Maybe grab some uh, blankets and pillows just in case. Uh, but yeah, so do not come out of your safe spots until you are given the all clear. Again, this is a tornado emergency, which uh, if, if I do say so myself, I think it's even greater than a tornado warning at this time because uh, we did see uh, quite a bit of some uh, uh, spin-ups off towards Washtenaw Parish that eventually started to track its way off towards the west and the uh, towards the east and the northeast, I should say. Um, in regards to the current tornado warnings, um, there the broad circulations continue. Uh, the 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 imminent tornado threat seems to have weakened slightly, but you're already under a tornado warning. Just stay where you are. Um, but just in general, it looks as though um, we're, we're we're starting to see that that same area lift a little bit. Also, getting some preliminary damage reports. Don't want to share them just yet as we wait. Uh, to maybe try to confirm some of that. Uh, but uh, like I said, already getting some, some damage reports out of Monroe, uh, and we're, we're working to confirm that as quickly as possible. Exactly. So again, if you're just now tuning in, we're coming up on noon as of right now. Uh, Lexi, I, sorry to interrupt you again. No, just no to, please go ahead. Uh, 11, 12,000 people without power in Washtenaw Parish. 12,000 people without um, power. Uh, and, and another 2,000 to the north of town. So a lot of power outages. If you uh, know of folks that are wondering how they can get us, uh, Facebook Live, we're going to be streaming there as well. Yeah, there you go. So again, uh, it looks like now that... And, Really, uh, with, with the power outages, like you said, you know, just try and get on uh, Facebook, see if you can uh, get our information. That way we're on live stream and everything. But again, continuing to watch this tornado emergency, uh, and especially as it starts to head, to, uh, head downstream for areas off towards our east here. So again, uh, this continues until 1230. Some tornado warnings continue until 1245. Um, so yeah, that's basically what we're watching right now, especially up towards uh, Collingston right now. Yeah, that area of rotation is starting to kind of wrap up here, and we've been tracking this for a little bit here as uh, these storms continue to progress off towards the east here. And again, this is our live storm tracker Doppler radar, so right now uh, this is kind of our best view of these storms. This is closer to our radar site, so uh, we're getting the best view, at least what's happening at the surface here. You can see this area between Conston and Bastrop, and even up into Marouge, you folks especially, this is where we've had the problems here through the afternoon with the uh, strongest rotation. And that's where it's heading, folks. So, again, uh, hopefully you've been in your tornado safe places at this time. And this is mainly for northern Richland Parish, but, uh, d or, yeah, down south. Rayville, again, you folks are out of the warning, but you're still going to have strong damaging winds as these storms continue to push off towards the east. So, again, this is getting deeper into portions of Morehouse and portions of Richland Parish, just off out of the Twin Cities. So, looks like now kind of the Twin Cities starting to cool down a little bit as far as activity goes um, here. But we're starting to get, you know, this activity pushing into portions of uh, getting closer to West Carroll Parish. So, again, folks in Oak Grove, uh, folks in Forest, those communities, even Lake Providence, you folks need to be keeping an eye out on things. Epps, again, you guys have been in the warning for a while now. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you are taking uh, your necessary tornado precautions as, uh, again, these spin-ups are spin-ups. They can happen just as quickly as uh, they were there and they were not there. So it's one of those situations where it's going to be impossible possible to really pinpoint exactly where that's going to happen. But uh, ooh, look, there's a little, also another little area of rotation just to the southwest of Rayville here. Uh, looks like that's down into portion that looks like it's in the portions just eastern edges of Washita Parish. Looks like uh, our live storm tracker Doppler radar picking up on another little area of rotation just to the southwest of Rayville. So no warning on this at least, but just something to note that again uh, along this line that potential exists for those spin ups. So just keep an eye out on it. Again, uh, still tracking circulations off towards the north, especially as our live storm tracker Doppler radar is picking that up, especially heading into the Bastrop area. So folks in Bastrop. I hope that you have been in your safe place by now, but it looks like uh, at least the most concentrated area of rotation moving into your region as we speak. So again, folks between Bastrop, Collinson, and Marouge, you folks need to be in your tornado safe place now. Hopefully hey, you have been. Brian, just a, a kind of a heads up. Um, 
We, we are starting to get some damage reports. I just kind of ran down to the newsroom to listen to the scanners. Uh, there, there's a, a lot of damage reports being made in Monroe, Monroe Police and Monroe Fire starting to, uh, to kind of set things up. I heard um, that they were trying to set basically, uh, they're, they're basically trying to set like a command area up in and around uh, the Cherry Blossom area in Goldendale and Cherry Blossom. That's where they're setting, uh, they, they were getting ready to kind of stage things from there. Uh, I don't know how much damage there is there. We have a lot of phone calls out, but right now, to be honest, we can't send crews because there's still lightning and, 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 and damaging wind potential in the area. And to be honest, we, we just got to we got to get the, the storm settled in our area briefly before we can start sending crews out. But that's, uh, again, we're already starting to get a lot of damage reports from in and around Monroe and West Monroe from this, uh, from this tornado. Okay, so you heard it from him, folks. We will keep you updated as these damage reports continue to trickle into the uh, studios here. And again, uh, folks just need to be paying attention, especially off towards the east. That uh, that storm that just went through our area is pushing off east. So again, uh, that should just be even much more precedent for folks off towards the east. That's just how serious you need to be taking the, today's activity, especially as uh, storms continue to push that way. Looks like the circulation, especially for the uh, back Strip, Collinston, Marouge area still holding together here as uh, we go through now just afternoon here on Easter Sunday and uh, not tracking as much of a rotation down south. So again, when we mean those brief spin-ups, we don't necessarily mean that they're going to be weak. They just, they hit, they can hit hard, they can hit weak. It, it just depends on the conditions. But when we mean brief spin-ups, they're not there for a long time. So again, uh, we are, that's been the case here and it looks like, you know, we had some stronger spin-ups move through the Twin Cities earlier, and uh, as this area of storm starts to push further towards the east, um, that's when we'll, you know, that's when that threat will continue. So now we're down to one tornado warning here across uh, portions of Morehouse, Richland, and um, maybe even extreme western portions of, uh, of West Carroll Parish here as uh, these storms continue to push eastward. This line again, it's usually the northern ends of these lines. I'm gonna actually switch it over to uh, classic reflectivity here just really quick so I can explain why exactly we're seeing uh, the stronger areas of rotation on the northern edges. So on these little bookend uh, couplets here, you can get little spin-ups, especially on the northern end as, you know, with spin, this is what happens on the northern end of storms. So that's why we're seeing a lot of this activity concentrated along and north of I-20. It looks like there's even a little notch starting to form. Uh, again, just north of Rayville here in the tornado warning. So uh, again, these things pop up as quickly as they come in, but this is uh, due west of Epps, and this is moving towards the northeast. So then folks in Epps, need to be keeping an eye out on that possibly another little brief uh, uh, return showing up there but again we were seeing the uh, the stronger areas of rotation back into Bass Strip and now as this line continues to push eastward looks like it's going to be more of a threat now for West Carroll Parish and uh, eastern or northeastern portions of uh, Richland Parish here so again it, it's a pretty big tornado warning it's covering uh, quite a few parishes here uh, extreme extreme eastern portions of Washita Parish but at least the good news is the this activity starting to wind down in the Twin Cities, at least. Not quite done yet, but the uh, area of concern, at least, that we're tracking here is what's heading now into portions of West Carroll Parish. Uh, lots of uh, lots of heavy rainfall along I-20 in Rayville. Again, uh, and even pockets of hail. We heard a few hailstones hit the roof here of our West Monroe studio, can or studio area. So, again, uh, you know, small hail possible as these storms move through. And especially when it bows out like this, that's when we have that potential to see uh, damaging straight line winds as well. So I'm going to flip this back to velocity. We're going to check this out too and see uh, what's going on as far as rotation goes. And I might actually get a look at uh, the Jackson radar too because we should start to get into range with that. But uh, notice this, just talking about this a little bit uh, with that, that little notch that was developing just west of Epps. There it is. You can kind of see it here lost in our radar, but it's this area right here that I was talking about. And uh, Epps just off towards the west. But you can see that little area is one of the little brief areas of rotation that is popping up here as uh, this line progresses. Starting to get a little bit out of phase here 
as we get farther away from our live storm tracker Doppler radar. But it looks like there is a little bit of area of brighter greens showing up on our relative velocity here. I'm just going to switch it over on our Jackson radar just to see if we can see anything per se from their vantage point as uh, we might be able to get an indication. But at least at this time, the radar beam from this uh, radar, it's uh, pretty far away. So we're looking pretty high up in the storm. So uh, not necessarily at the surface, but uh, we're seeing some areas of highlighted, um, you know, stronger winds, especially aloft. So that could potentially mean that there could be a circulation at the surface here. It's a little bit cleaner than our live storm tracker Doppler radar, at least at the moment. But again, um, it looks like mainly into rural par areas of um, Morehouse Parish, and uh, into extreme northern portions of uh, Richland Parish here. So again, tornado warning in effect for those parishes mentioned here, and uh, we're going to be seeing this activity continue to push through. Good news is the majority of it has uh, been you know, staying mainly towards the north. We haven't seen too much to the south, but actually with that latest update right here, seeing a little bit hotter colors towards the south. Uh, real quick, Brian, just to kind of organize folks uh, to let everybody at home know what's happening. We got a lot of damage reports, uh, a lot of them, uh, in and around Monroe and West Monroe. Uh, we have damage reports from in and around Master Museum in the St. John Street. There's trees down, there's homes damaged there. Uh, we will have a crew en route there. We have a lot of extensive damage reports from Lazar Park in West Monroe. Um, I don't want to go into specifics about those damage reports yet, but there is a lot of damage reported in Lazar Park. Uh, we have a crew headed that direction. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, Monroe West Monroe, uh, the Monroe PD, Monroe, uh, uh, Monroe Fire, starting to set up a, a kind of a command post or at least a staging area of so sorts in the uh, uh, Golden uh, Tate area and also the uh, Cherry Blossom communities. And it also looks like uh, Monroe Fire Department is reporting that people are trapped in their homes uh, near Sunflower. I think it is on Sunflower. Sunflower is uh, north of the interstate, um, it, it, out, I believe t by, out by the mall uh, in that general area area. So uh, we have uh, uh, people, uh, I believe 10 to 15 homes damaged in that general area from what we heard. Uh, now there's a, a tornado debris signature um, in south of, of Marouge, uh, Brian. Uh, it is not as organized as some of the other signatures have been, but, uh, but just kind of take note of that. Yeah, let's take a look at this on a live storm tracker Doppler radar here. That's the Golden Dale communities, not Golden Tate. I believe he's a football player. My apologies. But anyway, that uh, again, Golden, Golden Dale and, and Cherry Blossom communities, Lazar Park, uh, in and around the Master Museum, around St. John Street, downtown Monroe. Uh, those areas have been hit pretty hard, too. Okay, so here's a... Uh, it's, it's tricky to see here, but this is the area of rotation that uh, Jared mentioned. Uh, he was saying that, you know, moving over the Marouge region. So again, uh, tornado warning still exists for you folks. Hopefully you folks have been in your tornado safe place at this time. And uh, again, it's going to be continuing to push off towards the east here. And um, we will continue to see this activity strengthen as it does. So, um, you know, we will continue to stay on air with you as uh, this activity continues to push eastward through the course of the day. Yes, exactly. So again, if you're still in that uh, tornado polygon, just make sure you are still staying in your safe places. Wait until you are given the all clear. It looks like a Bastrop in Collin uh, Collinston is now out of that warning box. So you guys are pretty much in the clear. But again, off towards the east and the northeast, we're still watching for the potentials for uh, maybe a few spin-ups. And like Brian was mentioning before, uh, spin-ups are very quick, but that doesn't mean uh, that they are weak. They can be fairly strong. And then on top of that, we also have that chance for some straight line winds uh, moving across those areas as well. So that's what we're going to continue to watch uh, here for at least the next uh, 20 to 30 minutes. I do believe the uh, tornado mercy does expire at 1230. No word yet if they are going to extend it. That's going to be up to the uh, National Weather Service in Jackson, which they're now starting to uh, see that transition. Uh, and very soon, that's what, the, uh, what our main source for radar is going to be at, is going to be the National Weather Service in Jackson, because we're out of range for the National Weather Service in Shreveport. So again, this is really the kind of the only only active tornado warning slash emergency we do have at this time. There is still maybe a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings back out towards the west, but again, those aren't the main concern right now. Our main focus is going to be on this storm. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and see if we can uh, uh, see a little bit more activity here. We'll go to uh, see what uh, Jackson's picking up on uh, for storm relative velocity here. 
Yeah, it was noticing, I mean, again, just keep in mind, it's, it's shooting pretty high up in the atmosphere at this point. That's so, right, yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things that we have to consider, but, you know, with that being said, you can see a few areas that are, are being picked up here. And uh, I'd say like right along that uh, that edge where I'm pointing right here, Brian. Yeah, right yeah. along the the west or the eastern periphery of the line that yeah. is moving. So basically, through. where I'm directing my hand right now, about that area is probably the area we're going to continue to watch over uh, the next couple of uh, I'd say about at least half an hour, maybe even greater. Again, depending if this warning and emergency does get extended. So either way, if you see your little area in this uh, polygon. Make sure you are still in place, including Marouge, and this does include Epps, a forest, maybe a small portion of Oak Grove, but again, Bastrop and Coniston is now outside of that area, and again, uh, Washita Parish is no longer under a tornado warning. But again, uh, this, this really did uh, fire up quite quickly. Again, I was mentioning before, right before Jared sent us out, uh, went outside very briefly to look, and you could just see the rain start to kind of like blow around in a circular motion. So it was a good thing that we came back inside and we kind of took care of, of business at that. So again, we'll continue to watch this area over the next at least half an hour. Again, if you do see your area in this red polygon. Again, this is expected to continue until 1230 unless they decide to extend it. Like we said, we're starting to see the transition to getting our information. Oh my gosh, did you, did you guys see that right here? Right here. So let me go ahead and point out where. Actually, I'm, two areas really. Yeah, to be two honest. areas. So we'll look at this area right here, and then right here, just to the west of Epps. So again, um, might be seeing um, some rotation beginning to pick up. Is the National Weather Service in Jackson saying anything? If you know. Uh, not really. Not yet. Um, okay. New. new uh, they. they they're continuing the severe thunderstorm warnings for these areas as well. So that okay. uh, is kind of a side note, but uh, but clearly uh, some damaging wind potential as that that line continues to move east. And it can't can't stress this enough at this point. These storms have a history of producing damage, and from what it sounds like so far, pretty intense damage. So uh, no reason to play around with this. Uh, be in the safe places that you're supposed to be at. Uh, you know the drill. We do this a lot in April. So uh, just be where you're supposed to be and uh, just kind of wait this storm out. Lexi, just a, a glance now, and there is a lot of folks without power. I, I mean, a lot of people without power in this in I believe this it too, yeah. So, uh, so like I said, uh, remind folks, call them, let them know. Uh, that they could pick us up on Facebook. Uh, 15,000 people in Washtenaw Parish without power right now. All right, 15,000 uh, 2,000 people in Jackson Parish without power right now. You can pick us up on Facebook Live or you can go to myarclimus.com. Same stream there. Okay, granted, it'll be 30 to 40 seconds delayed, so you'll have to act that much faster uh, when you get the information, but uh, just kind of keep that in mind. And, and also, too, if you're going to be, you know, if you've given the all clear, again, if you're in the polygon, don't move anywhere, but if you've been given all right. the all clear. Now, now, three tornado debris signatures, Lexi. Okay. One noted west of Darnell, uh, moving along Highway uh, 585. Uh, that's uh, in the Darnell community in, in, in West, uh, West Carroll Parish. Uh, that's, uh, that, and then two west of El Epps, so there's three in total. So we've got one near the Darnell community, one, uh, two of them near Epps. Uh, and and uh, so there's one to the north, and then the one the two farther southward toward Epps. You can see the two, the, the areas of spin up. So there's a, the two right there, and then there's one to your south. Um, uh, and and those are the areas of rotation. Okay, yeah, I, I see. I see the one coming up towards the south yeah. here. Yeah, got a couple of them actually. Look at this. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a new tornado one so, yeah, for East Carroll Parish soon. We're, we're talking about these areas right here. You can so again, kind of folks, see velocity begin, beginning to pick up just a little bit in those areas. Yeah, exactly. That's why we harp, even though that folks may not necessarily be in the tornado warning, these brief spin-ups happen so quickly that you folks need to just be taking everything seriously today, be getting into your safe place as uh, these storms will pack a punch in one form or another. Exactly. And again, if you are in an uh, area that's been given the all clear um, and you are maybe getting ready to kind of step outside, we kind of don't recommend uh, walking around it, just the fact that, you know, there's probably going to be uh, trees down or maybe even power, power lines. lines. Yeah, so again, do not approach those power lines. Get away from those power lines. Uh, don't, don't even go near them. Okay, no, so. And, and also, on that note, Lexi, sorry to interrupt you, but there's, no, a, secondary, there's a secondary severe weather threat. Later this afternoon, exactly. um, we, we still have some storms back into central Louisiana, even into eastern Texas. They may not produce as much of a tornado threat, but they will produce a damaging wind and hail threat later on this afternoon. Exactly. That's why uh, some of our areas, our, our tornado watches, go until 8 p.m., including most of the eastern area. Now, it, uh, the ones off towards the west uh, most likely did expire at noon, but not sure if they have reassigned them. Have we had any word on those tornado watches off towards the western arc limits? Do you guys know? I uh, haven't trimmed any back yet, and okay. uh, to be honest with you, 
we really haven't been paying attention to a lot of those. That's all right. Our main concern, anyway, is this tor tornado uh, emergency at this time, which, again, we're starting to see maybe some uh, possible uh, rotation beginning to pick up, pick back up once again. Uh, let's take a look at the shear here. Yeah, the shear's beginning to pick up as well. You can see that the straight lines uh, stretching all the way just to the uh, west and the southwest of Forest, and now beginning to approach the area of Epps as well. Now it looks like they've trimmed back that tornado emergency just a little bit, so Marouge is out in the clear now, along with Bastrop and Collingston. Uh, Epps is still in it, along with Forest, and as we move down towards the south here. Maybe could possibly see a little bit of shear beginning to pick up uh, just a little bit, but again, no warning yet for this area, uh, including Ma uh, Magnum or Rayville. Uh, Dow High not in the warning either, so it, right now it's just a small area, but it now it looks like they've extended that warning off towards the east here. Is that a new tornado warning? Yeah, it looks like for East Carroll Parish. East Carroll Parish. Yeah, that's uh, the new tornado warning out. Uh, is severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado, actually a confirmed tornado near Goodwill, okay. uh, 19 miles northeast of Ravel, moving northeast at 55. So that is a confirmed tornado due to the, uh, the, the tornado debris signatures that we had on radar. Yeah, storm relative velocity and velocity both looking impressive with the uh, possibilities of winds beginning to pick up, also maybe some potential rotation at that. Looks like we've got um, a lot of trees down between Arcadia and Ruston along I-20. Uh, yeah. A lot of this, to be honest. A lot honest, of strong, most likely heavier rainfall associated with this, this area as well. Correct. Yeah. So, so again, the, this warning continues until 1230, but it looks like now they've extended it. How long does that warning go to off towards uh, East Carroll? That goes till 1245. 1245. Okay, so next 30 minutes or so. So, again, uh, if you are in that red area, as indicated on this map right here. Just make sure you are still in your safe place. Do not come out until the all clear is given. Make sure you go to the centermost part of your house, grab some pillows, blankets, stay away from any kind of windows. Uh, we'll continue to monitor this. Again, we're not going anywhere. We're going to stay on the air until these warnings expire. So yeah, if you're just joining us, uh, I would imagine you probably aren't just joining us at this point, but we're coming up on about 10 or 12.30 in the afternoon here. And again, we're tracking uh, at least two uh, active tornado warnings at the time. Confirmed tornado in the, uh, you said it was the Goodwill community? Yes. Goodwill community. So, again, if that sounds familiar, you folks need to be taking shelter in that community now. With these storms are cer certainly something you do not want to be messing around with today and uh, just with the history that these storms have had. So, again, uh, make sure that you're in your tornado safe place. And we can also take a look at this on the shear button here. And uh, where you're seeing that higher shear value is where the highest potential damaging winds are and even that tornado that we were just talking to you. So, kind of, um, maybe go through some of these. There's Bearskin, New Hope. I'm trying to see if I can find the Goodwill community. There it is up towards the north, covered in that heavy shear. So again, confirmed tornado for the Goodwill community. Uh, heavy shear backing that up, and uh, that will continue to push eastward as it does. So, again, uh, folks further south along this area of enhanced shear, the uh, New Hedge uh, community looks like Bearskin has already moved eastward, but uh, looks like the New Hedge community needs to be getting into your tornado safe place. Again, uh, not confirmed tornado down that way, at least not yet, but uh, certainly you're in the tornado warning. And uh, there's the Darnell community right there for folks uh, just to give you an idea of where we are looking at. There's the Darnell community as well, and uh, there's Floyd as well, and um, let's see, there's Epps off towards the southeast. Not as strong shear, but again, take it seriously, folks. Uh, these storms are not playing around today and are doing damage. So, heading into West Carroll Parish right now, we'll eventually be getting into East Carroll Parish. That is why that they are under a tornado warning as well, and the good news is, at least with that latest update on the shear, not as intense. However, it does not mean that it hasn't gone away. It is still very much there and uh, still very pronounced. So, again, uh, confirmed tornado near the Goodwill community. This is heading closer to the Forest Oak Grove area. You folks needed to be in your tornado safe place a while ago. Hopefully you still have time to get into your tornado safe place as this area of rotation continues to push off towards the east here. And again, a little bit further south into West Carroll Parish. Looks like Epps getting kind of spared, at least from the higher shear values. But uh, up towards the north, let's see some of these roads I might be able to zoom in on. Again, there's the Darnell community, New Hope. You folks need to be into your tornado safe shelter. So again, uh, tornado warning continues for those folks. Uh, still picking up on strong shear. I know we haven't talked uh, about folks uh, south of I-20 too much.
through the course of the day. A lot of the action has been north of I-20, but I just want to point out here, shear is showing up south of I-20, so storms will continue to be dangerous pretty much uh, wherever they exist in the Arklamas today. And as mentioned, we're not going to be quite done as there will be another round possible by the time we get to this afternoon and evening. But again, the ones of concern mainly into portions of uh, West Carroll Parish here and uh, extreme northern portions of Richland Parish as uh, they continue to push east. It looks like they're picking up speed, so the good news is these danger storms will eventually be in uh, east of the Mississippi River here, but folks in Lake Providence, uh, you're in the warning. You need to be in your tornado safe place. Hopefully, again, Oh, folks in Oak Grove should have been in their safe place by now, but uh, folks in Lake Providence, you guys have some time to do so if you haven't already. So I'm going to switch back to classic reflectivity here and uh, kind of see what we're dealing with. And again, even in addition to uh, the, the rotation and the strong winds, there is a lot of rainfall, even some hail likely being picked up here in the pink <laughs> returns. So again, uh, you're not going to see it. Anything that decides to uh, form here, you are not going to see it. Don't even try to see it. Make sure you are taking the necessary tornado precautions as uh, it, these storms are very, very dangerous. So I'm actually going to switch it right back over to storm relative velocity here real quickly and uh, just take an idea of what we can get as far as rotation goes. Again, uh, there's a little bit of a stronger area of rotation being picked up uh, just northeast of Epps here. Looks like uh, there's another one going pretty much right over Oak Grove. So again, that's concerning. Those folks needed to be in their safe place. And uh, Again, dangerous storms, strong damaging straight line winds, likely with these storms, regardless of if they produce a tornado or not. All right, thankfully, we, well, and I say thankfully, this is a, an odd way of putting it, but we only have these active tornado warnings out right now. Uh, fortunately, uh, for a lot of the areas, the, the, the line has been really focused, or the, the, this line segment has really become the major focus of uh, the severe thunderstorm threat at least here in the short term. So a little bit of good news there that we could kind of focus the forecast, or at least uh, here in the short term, uh, uh, focus our attention on this one area of thunderstorm activity. And you can see another area of rotation starting to kind of uh, flare up, as Brian had just mentioned, and then the other more broadened area of rotation out over uh, central sections of West Carroll Parish. But uh, again, for folks that are back to the south, still looking at some damaging wind signatures embedded within this line, and also on top of that, uh, just overall torrential, heavy downpours. So again, uh, it'll be impossible to see anything. Uh, make sure that you're in your proper safe places now. And then again, you can see back out to the south, still seeing some very strong wind signatures associated with this, and maybe even some areas of rotation trying to form on this uh, kind of southern flank. I want to switch uh, over to our radar to see what we can see. And, and we're kind of catching the back edge of a lot of these storms, but you can still see that broadened area of rotation that will eventually move out of West Carroll Parish. We'll move right along the West Carroll, East Carroll line, but uh, just kind of puts in perspective uh, that the, uh, the areas of rotation in respect to the pockets of the heaviest rain that we're seeing in some of these developing storms. Back out to the south, still some damaging wind potential from Delhi southward to Winsboro, although as you move back toward Columbia, that threat probably light, uh, lessens uh, a little bit in those uh, immediate areas. But uh, for folks in East and West Carroll parishes, uh, they, we've given you plenty of lead time. You probably were watching these storms when they were entering Bienville and Lincoln and Jackson parishes, and that was two and a half hours ago. So make sure that you're in your safe place now. Uh, you've had plenty of, uh, of lead time and, and plenty of heads up to get there. Make sure that you're in the interior portion of your home, away from windows and doors, and uh, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. And again, I know that it's not necessarily uh, actually in the warning itself, but for folks in Oak Grove, and uh, for the neighbors to the northeast, you need to keep an eye on this just outside the warning. And yeah, see, that rotation's picking up even stronger now. Yeah, it uh, is. To the northeast of uh, Oak Grove. If you're in the uh, San, uh, Stanford Road areas, uh, Stanford Lane, Holmes Lane, and into the Terry communities and Chickasaw communities, and gen generally north of Highway 2 out of Oak Grove, you need to be in your safe place now. I know there's not a tornado warning active with that, but that's probably one of our strongest areas of rotation here in the short term uh, over the last few radar swipes. Again, you can still see the additional area of rotation back out uh, to the southwest of Forest, moving to the northeast there. Another area of rotation now entering West Carroll Parish and moving east there. 
Now, the good, good news is that this leading edge of thunderstorms is approaching the Mississippi River and uh, will kind of uh, at least give us a brief break, although there is, again, that severe weather threat later on tonight or later, there, later on this afternoon into this evening, uh, mainly for hail potential and maybe some damaging wind gusts there. But that leading edge still has the, uh, the southeasterly winds filtering into it, creating a lot of uh, directional wind shear, a lot of change in wind direction and speed as you move higher in altitude. And that starts from the ground up. And that's where we start seeing those updrafts. Uh, and once they get sustained in the atmosphere, uh, they can start rotating and producing hail, heavy rain, damaging wind gusts. Once the, those uh, stronger winds get shifted over to the downdraft part of the storm, uh, and then also a, a violently rotating updraft that touches the ground, it's called a tornado. So uh, again, these are all things that are headed our direction. And, and I cannot stress it enough that uh, we've given you a lot of heads up. Just be in your safe place now. Yeah, but pretty much like, like uh, Jared was saying before, we've been watching this since pretty much it was in eastern Texas earlier this morning, sometime between 8 and 9 o'clock, and we did go on the air right as it was starting to enter just outside of our viewing area. So we've been on the air for a good maybe three, three and a half hours right now. So uh, again, we still only have those two active tornado warnings at this time. I think one does expire here coming up soon, unless they decide to extend it, which is pretty much the one that we do see here that continues until 1245. That does include East Carroll Parish and some portions heading out into Mississippi. So again, still seeing quite a bit of some torrential rainfall. You can see that indicated by the reds and the purples. And again, we still have the potential for maybe seeing some strong damaging winds as well. So we'll go ahead and take a look at what the shear is showing right now to kind of see um, if they're still picking up on a little bit of some uh, strong winds here. And not looking as great, but you can kind of see those areas in the brighter greens that are indicating that's where some of those stronger winds are currently located. So it looks like things, again, not trying to downplay it, kind of weakening just a little bit. But either way, we're still going to continue to watch this closely uh, as the afternoon goes along. Picking up on a storm relative velocity here. Uh, again, it looks like it's starting to lose a little bit of luster, but again, we'll continue to watch this over the next couple of hours. But again, this is the only two active warnings we do see at this time. So again, if you do see your area in this red color, and that does, uh, it, it does include a West and East Carroll parishes, just make sure you're still in your uh, safe places. Make sure you are still uh, away from windows. Just uh, stay there until you are given uh, the all clear. It looks like it's moving across uh, Highway 65 at this time, and it'll eventually move off towards uh, the Louisiana and Mississippi state line, eventually move off towards Mississippi. All right, Lexi, just kind of uh, checking out uh, uh, some, some damage reports and just some information uh, coming in. Not a lot out there right now. To be honest with you, there's still a lot of areas that are, that are still getting the heavy rain and the, and the lightning out of their areas. So uh, while the leading edge of, of these storms have the highest tornado potential, potential I do want to stress enough, I can't stress this enough, that there will be more than likely another cluster of storms that develops kind of as the dry line surges into the Arkla, Texas region later tonight for the northern sections of the Arkla Miss. That would bring a hail potential, but would really limit the tornado potential at this point. Not expected to be a big issue. But, uh, but like I said, just don't let your guard down completely if you're in the wake of these early storms. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, we're, we're still seeing that potential for obviously some potential heavy rainfall and also that possibility of some strong winds as indicated by this heavier reds and maybe even these purple colors as well, especially that leading edge of these uh, thunderstorms at this time. But again, these are the only two active tornado warnings that we do see. We're coming up on 1230 this Sunday, this Easter Sunday afternoon. Uh, again, hopefully everyone in this, these two flashing red polygons are still in their safe places until given further notice. We're still getting uh, storm damage damage reports coming out of Washtenaw Parish and areas off towards our west. Kind of a little bit of a delayed reaction, but again, uh, the conditions are, are going to limit the way the crews are going to go out and observe that damage. And again, um, we'll continue bringing you those updates. Again, at least 15,000 people without power in Washtenaw Parish, and I believe Jared said 2,000 without power in Jackson Parish. Very well could see that number increase depending on uh, the damaging winds and if the, you know, the powers kind of have a little bit of a domino effect here, but uh, we'll continue to watch that. So. Uh, we still do have two uh, warnings in place. One goes until, I believe, 1245, the other one until 1 o'clock. I do believe this one is going to expire here soon unless they decide to keep it up for just a little bit longer. But again, the main focus right now is this one off towards East Carroll Parish at this time. Damaging wind potential obviously still there um, with this storm as, as the area of rotation has become a little bit more mm -hmm. disheveled and ragged. Um, but 
like I said, with, with a lot of these areas of rotation, Lexi, I mean, it hasn't taken long for them to just spin right back up and, 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 and be violent again in a short period of time. And, and, and it was very quick, uh, that system, that when it moved across uh, Washita Parish Lake into areas in West Monroe and Monroe, it didn't take long for it to kind of really fire up because, again, uh, when we went to look outside, the rain was already starting to kind of uh, wrap a little bit. Didn't stay outside for long. We went immediately back inside, and we went into our safe room. Uh, so uh, hopefully everyone did that as well. So, again, uh, just make sure you're still in your safe place at this time. Looks like shear is uh, starting to really begin to die down, but either way, you can see those brighter greens indicating those stronger winds off towards uh, the, the Mississippi River beginning to cross into the state of Mississippi as well. A couple of areas of some strong winds just outside of the warning box, including areas uh, along Interstate 20, including Tallulah, and eventually getting off towards Vicksburg as well. Uh, Madison, Tensaw Parish, not really seeing much strong winds, but there is still some potential there. And then off towards uh, Caldwell Parish with Columbia, maybe just a little bit. But again, our main focus is going to be these two warnings up here. And again, uh, we actually do have, we did have a for thunderstorm but has since expired um, across uh, the central Arkhamus. Yeah, and that, uh, the tornado warning that goes in for East Carroll Parish also uh, juts into adjacent sections of Mississippi. That goes to 115. 115, uh, okay. So we've got about another 45 minutes of, of that tornado warning. Granted, that, that, that storm may cross the Mississippi River before that, mm -hmm. and we'd be able to cancel that warning. Also, cannot stress enough on this southern edge, you just mentioned it as well, that southern edge, you, you folks need to stay weather aware. Caldwell Parish into Catahoula, Concordia Parish, because I know that southern edge of that line hasn't been overly impressed here at the onset, but uh, it, yeah. it's still capable of producing some damaging winds along the way as well. Yeah, and you can kind of see this like we were showing you just earlier. Went ahead and pulled up the, the shear uh, tracker. You can kind of see those areas of green indicating some possible strong winds associated in Caldwell Parish and maybe just a little bit off towards uh, Madison Tensaw Parish as well, beginning to cross over into uh, over the Mississippi River eventually into the state of Mississippi. So, again, just a heads up to folks in Vicksburg and at Tallulah, especially off towards the west of Tallulah, we do see an area of maybe some possible strong winds at this time. Uh, pulling up the reflectivity just to kind of see uh, where we're situated right right now. Looks like a small area of uh, showers, maybe even a few thunderstorms moving just to the south of the interstate of Tallulah and Vicksburg. But heads up to Tallulah, you have this area of heavy rainfall and potentially strong winds that are going to be possibly moving into your area probably within the next 20 to uh, uh, half an hour. So again, just a heads well, up there. Lexi, that, nope. that area of rotation starting to tighten back up west of Transylvania and Hollybrook. Uh, that's uh, generally west of Highway 65. But uh, in, in uh, central and northern sections, actually central sections of East Carroll Parish, those reds and greens start to come back together a little bit. Yeah, we can kind of see it right here. This is the area he's talking about. You can see like Lake Providence. And zoom in just a little bit more. So we're looking at this area right here. So that red line is Highway 65 on the right-hand side of your screen. Oh, yeah, this one too. Yeah, I do see it right there. So that, puts, uh, that kind of puts in perspective. Uh, by the way, when these storms move through Monroe, the, uh, the airport did measure a 69 mile an hour wind gust. So yeah. uh, th these storms have a history of producing at least near 70 mile an hour winds as they move through, along with the possibility of a tornado. Yeah, and, and that's not including the gusts either. You can have a 60 mile per hour wind, but at, on top of that, you have a wind gust of at least 75 to possibly even 80 miles per hour, which again will lead to uh, fairly some uh, very strong wind damage as well. So again, uh, we still do have this current warning out until 1:15, mostly for East Carroll Parish moving off to, uh, towards uh, the uh, Mississippi River and eventually into Mississippi. Still looking at an area of maybe some possible rotation. Looks like it's looking a l just a slight tad more tighter. It's again just to the southwest of uh, Lake Providence. You can kind of see it there, but also maybe a little bit off towards the uh, eastern side of the Mississippi River. At yeah, near the Bowie community. Um, our radar's picking it up as well. So, yeah, yeah if you're, you if you're in those areas, bit. like I said, get in your safe place now. Yeah, safe place. Again, if you see your area, and that red polygon, make sure you are still staying in your safe place. Do not come out until the all clear is given. We'll continue to monitor, the, monitor this until the area is clear. All right, uh, again, a reminder that this uh, tornado, this particular tornado warning goes until uh, 1 15. So we've got about another 30 minutes, 45 minutes of, or so. Now, granted, the, the, the actual circulation itself will probably cross the Mississippi River, I would say, in the next 20 minutes. But it'll also cross some uh, fairly busy areas in uh, in East Carroll Parish, from Lake Providence down once uh, down Highway 65. There's our area of rotation. Maybe another little secondary area of rotation there as well. The shear picks it up quite well too, to the southwest of Lake Providence. Oh, yeah, uh, it's getting a little stronger. Yep. 
Yeah, so uh, it is picking back up, and, and this is what we've been seeing all day, uh, really since last night in central Texas with, with some of these storms, how quickly the, those areas of circulation will fizzle and then pulse back up, getting a lot of viewer reports of damage uh, in, in Monroe and West Monroe. But uh, again, we're going to kind of stick with this until we can get it across the Mississippi River. But embedded in that circulation is extremely heavy rain. Uh, it would be virtually impossible to see anything until it was way too late to take cover. And these storms are moving rather rapidly. There's our area of rotation back out to the south and west. I'm going to switch back over to our live radar, which did have a pretty good look at uh, some of these areas of rotation. Yeah, it's still setting back here to the uh, uh, southwest of Lake Providence, moving to the north and east. So again, if you're in these areas, you've had a lot of lead time, proper tornado precautions, interior portion of your home away from windows and doors, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Getting a kind of a new radar image there, and you can uh, pretty much just draw it out right there to the southwest of Lake Providence. And I'm going to uh, try to get in uh, a little bit closer in on some of these uh, streets and see uh, some of the areas that are impacted. Uh, Hoffbrook Road, Hollybrook Road, excuse me, uh, as uh, one of the areas, the Greenfield community. Uh, you can see uh, Peanut Road and White Road. If you're in these areas, again, proper tornado precautions. If the road sounds familiar, make a phone call. Here's the Willman communities and Hollybrook communities in uh, East Carroll Parish. Uh, again, this will be crossing Highway 65 probably in the next 10 minutes or so, maybe even sooner than that, actually probably in the next five minutes as uh, this thing continues to move east. Here's the Mississippi River. Once it gets east of the Mississippi River, we will uh, probably see that tornado warning trimmed down and, and, and no longer include uh, most of our area. But uh, again, until you get to that uh, juncture, you need to be in your safe place. Uh, we've had a lot of lead time, and again, that area of rotation is kind of tucked back behind some heavy rain, although the area of rotation is probably moving in conjunction with kind of the, the back edge of that heavy rainfall. But uh, if you're in these areas, make sure that you're in your safe place now. Back out to the south and west, and I'm going to go ahead and clear that little circle that I drew off the screen, but uh, back out to the south and west, still keeping an eye on some of these thunderstorms approaching uh, the I-20 corridor uh, in Tallulah and Vicksburg uh, and, and in the Mount communities. Again, the winds here don't look overly strong at this point, but still some gusty to damaging winds uh, certainly possible, especially as Lexi mentioned, those wind gusts, which could be uh, the bigger headache here in the short term. And uh, most locations will continue to see at least some form of a severe weather threat in the form of hail and maybe some damaging wind gusts later on this evening. But that tornado warning will be moving uh, very close to the Mississippi River uh, here in the next uh, 5 to 10 minutes and will uh, be crossing Highway 65 as well. So, again, if you're in these areas, Lake Providence, even points a little bit further west of Lake Providence, there's a, an embedded circulation there too. Safe place, interior portion of your home away from windows and doors, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Tornado watch remains in effect uh, for a good chunk of the area, some till 2, some until 8 o'clock tonight. Again, main uh, focus right now is on uh, this uh, particular tornado warning as it moves toward the Mississippi River. And again, this tornado warning does go until 1.15. Again, still keeping an eye on the possibility of an area of rotation. Looking like just now to the south of Lake Providence, almost on the cusps of the Mississippi River. So again, if you see your area anywhere in this red polygon, make sure you are still in your safe places. So we'll go ahead and see what... Oh. We'll go ahead and see what we what else we can find on the uh, shear map here. So we'll go to Jackson. We'll go to shear. Yes, yeah, still see quite a bit of shear just along the Mississippi River. So again, uh, damaging winds are still a big potential with this uh, this uh, thunderstorm cluster that we've been tracking pretty much uh, since the, for the last at least hour hour and a half. So we'll continue to keep an eye on it until we are given the all clear. Also, too. Let's go to storm relative velocity. Yeah, still seeing a little bit of that just to the south of Lake Providence. Taking a look at the velocity here, we'll see what we can see. Yeah, it looks like now starting to see a little bit of some bright green colors just to the lake of uh, Lake Providence as well. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that over the next couple of uh, minutes as well. Again, uh, th this continues until uh, 1.15. A tornado watch for our eastern parishes continues until 8 p.m. But again, if, even though we only have one active tornado warning at this time, like Jared was mentioning before, still want to keep an eye on the potential for storms and everything as we head into uh, down towards the um, uh, Caldwell Parish area as well. So again, this is the only active warning we're paying attention to right now. But you can see the um, 
Lake Delhi is getting in on some heavy rainfall. Tallulah just on the outside of that heavier rainfall. So uh, folks in Tallulah, even though a warning is most likely not going to be issued for your area, still have that potential of seeing that very heavy rainfall and strong damaging winds. Also off towards Vicksburg as well. We can see Vicksburg getting in on that first round of showers out ahead of that big storm system. So they're probably seeing some showers and thunderstorms at this time, but another round will be short, uh, shortly following it, uh, not too far behind. As we look back off towards the west here, still seeing quite a bit of rainfall uh, just uh, uh, just on the outside of Winbrook, uh, up towards Magnum and down towards Columbia as well. Uh, real quick, we'll go ahead and take a look at the shear factor, especially down towards the southern and uh, central parishes. Still seeing quite a bit of some strong winds in those areas. So again, even though there's not a warning, um, make sure that you are not going outside at this time, especially since we did have that uh, tornado emergency earlier this afternoon sometime uh, just before noon. There's most likely going to be some uh, damage reported, including trees down, maybe even some power lines. Again, uh, as of right now, it looks like 15,000 people in Washtenaw Parish are without power and about 2,000 out in towards Jackson Parish. And those numbers will continue to update uh, as we go throughout the rest of the afternoon. And very well could be a domino effect as uh, these power lines may be down. It, it might cut off the power for other folks across the area. So just be aware of that. So again, if you have lost power, hopefully you're uh, on your uh, phone right now. We're live streaming on Facebook as well. So this is how we're still able to bring you guys the latest updates. Uh, with the storm activity. Still seeing a little bit of some uh, shear activity up towards Madison and Tensaw Parish as we speak, but again, uh, not as great as it once was. But taking a look at the shear up towards this warning here is backing off just a little bit, but it did get stronger for just a short period of time, but now beginning to back off. But either way, not trying to lighten the situation. We still have a tornado warning in place until 115. That does include Lake Providence, uh, the, Miss, uh, the Mississippi River, and eventually moving out towards uh, northern portions of Mississippi as well. Hey, Lexi, yeah. Uh, just that area that's south of Lake Providence, the National Weather Service is confirming a tornado near the Transylvania area. Okay. It's moving east at 35 miles per hour, so it will be moving across the Mississippi River here shortly out of our viewing area, but I just wanted to let folks know that mm -hmm. the National Weather Service in Jackson is uh, continuing that. It was an observed tornado near the Transylvania area moving east at 35 miles per hour. So again, it's a... a is it, you said it was observed tornado, yes, right? Yes, uh, observed tornado. tornado. Okay, yeah. So again, Lake Providence folks, make sure you are still sticking into your uh, safe places. Do not come out until the all clear is given. Ever so slowly this morning, however, is starting to get trimmed back off towards the east. So a lot of areas are being let up from it, including the, Syria, uh, the city of Epps and up towards Oak Grove. But again, portions of uh, northern portions of, I, uh, of 65, Highway 65 are still under this warning as well. And again, hopefully not everyone, is, hopefully not a lot of people are out on the roads. I be very surprised if they are, especially since, you know, uh, these thunderstorms have been starting off since very early this morning, and we've you've had pl uh, plenty of time to kind of uh, act on that. Lexi, but real quick, we'll go ahead and pull up the shear one more time. I, go I go was, ahead. I had stepped outside and, and uh, was, was discussing things, but you, we do know this is a confirmed tornado, right? Yes. So this so is National okay. Weather Service. All right, just making sure that y'all yes. were all clear on that. Okay. Yes. Cool. Yes. All right. It would be, we'll be crossing the Mississippi River here shortly, but uh, that is a confirmed tornado on the ground uh, near Transylvania, now east clearly of Transylvania, uh, and moving along the Mississippi River. So again, and you know, our, our shear button is picking up even more shear heading into Lake Providence. So again, just with the tricky nature of these, uh, with this line of storms that we've been seeing through the course of the day today, again, uh, possibly we could see another brief spin up forming behind back into Lake Providence. But again, this will be pushing east into Mississippi here shortly. But again, hopefully folks in Lake Providence and the Transylvania area have been in their safe place. Not quite out of the woods yet, but notice the warning starting to get trimmed back uh, further towards the west, or at least the western edge of it getting trimmed back as this area of storms continues to push east. So there is a little bit of good news there. So again, confirmed tornado near the Transylvania area, likely in uh, the Mississippi area now, as uh, this was from a little while ago, and our shear marker is really indicating that the stronger shear pushing off towards the east. I just want to back this up a little bit because you can see some pockets of higher shear, especially in the Tallulah area and uh, for Mound and even back into Vicksburg. So again, even though you're not under official warning, damaging straight line winds still certainly a possibility at the very least with these storms going on. So again, uh, just recommendation, you know, just to be on the safe side, people in Tallulah should be in their safe place. Just 
just in case. So again, no official tornado warning for those folks in Tallulah, but at this point, would not hurt to be in that safe place, treat it as if something is happening. So again, damaging straight line winds is almost a certainty in pockets with these storms as they continue to push off towards the east, and eventually this will be getting out of our coverage area here shortly. But again, we will continue to stay on air with you as long as these warnings are in progress. And again, the only active tornado warning that we currently have in place is for portions of East Carroll Parish as uh, the remainder of this year continues to push east into uh, to Mississippi. Yeah, it looks like that tornado signature is right along the Mississippi River right now and uh, to the north of uh, east of Lake Providence. And we'll be moving across the Mississippi River here shortly. Uh, again, a reminder that a tornado watch remains in effect till 8 o'clock. Uh, for most of our eastern counties and parishes. This is the leading edge of the tornado threat. As it moves east and across the Mississippi River, that threat should diminish. But another round of strong to potentially severe thunderstorms can't be ruled out a couple of hours from now. We still have some storms developing back into eastern Texas and southern Oklahoma, and those would produce more of a hail threat. The tornado threat would be much, much more limited with uh, any uh, potential storm development there. But uh, I just want folks to not completely let their guard down once these storms get uh, east of the area. So also, dude, I just noticed that there was a pocket of shear kind of west of Tallulah here. And, um, you know, looking at a relatively loose area of rotation that's uh, just north uh, northeast of Delhi and towards the northwest of Tallulah, our shear marker is picking up on it as well. So, again, uh, folks along I-20, if you know folks that are traveling along that highway, um, just give them a call, let them know that a dangerous storm is heading in that area. And, again, this could be the next spot that develops one of those uh, brief spin-ups here as uh, these storms continue to push closer to the Mississippi River. But I just want to emphasize this is fairly broad rotation. It doesn't look uh, really too extreme, at least at this point, but it's just, it's there and in combination of our shear marker, something's going on, whether it's uh, damaging winds or, you know, even possibly something trying to get together here, uh, heading into portions of Madison Parish. But again, uh, official tornado warning continues for portions of East Carroll Parish and uh, even maybe a little smaller circulation just along a uh, highway, I believe that's 65 from what yep. I can tell. That's correct. Um, that, you know, not looking all that impressive, but again, these things pop up so quickly and they dissipate so quickly. So again, uh, just folks along the Highway 65 region still need to be paying to these attention to these storms as they continue to push off towards the east. So looking at that little area, you can see, again, something is going on just uh, north of I-20 here. It looks like along Highway 80 out into portions of Madison Parish. That's uh, a little area of uh, just weak rotation here. Pretty and, elevated, too. Bro. Yeah, and that's another thing we have to keep into account, that it is uh, looking pretty high up into the atmosphere. But let's look at storm... Uh, Let's look at actually our shear button here real quickly. And again, it is picking up on some stronger winds, even just south of I-22 uh, in portions of Madison Parish. So again, it looks like at least the confirmed tornado has largely pushed off and east of the Mississippi River. So again, folks, uh, just don't be paying attention, though. If you're in the Lake Providence area, storms are still working through we're, at this time. But Brian, Brian, we're also getting our first official damage reports um, uh, from the Monroe Regional Airport where several planes and hangars have been damaged uh, from the storms earlier. Uh, we had 70 mile an hour winds uh, uh, sustained, measured at the airport when the storms moved through and uh, a possible tornado that moved over the same areas as well. Uh, there was a lot of debris signatures there. So uh, again, we've got crews out and about uh, uh, as, as the storms start to clear, at least this first wave of storms start to clear. We've got folks out uh, our, our, our actual newscast will start NBC 10 News at 5, uh, and we'll have a, a full recap there. But uh, again, just kind of keep in mind, we're just now starting to get some of these damage reports coming in. Uh, trees down at the intersection of uh, 145 and 821. That's uh, near Shudron. Uh, same, same kind of story there. And, you know, folks, as these damage reports come in, uh, you know, officials need to be taking care of that. Uh, you know, emergency officials, uh, people with the city need to be taking care of that damage. So uh, just, you know, stay at home. Don't try to go look at it right now and, and see the scope of it. We will continue to report those those uh, reports to you. But it, it's just advised to just not go out at this time and, and try to get a look at that damage as uh, crews are just going to be out there helping people and, and trying to at least get, get things started to clean up.
and, and everything. So just uh, just be mindful of that as uh, the storms continue to, or as a uh, cleanup begins at least in the Twin Cities area. So again, just to kind of recap, we're coming up on the one o'clock hour here, and uh, this is our shear marker. And again, we're still seeing pockets of uh, damaging winds along uh, the Madison and down even into portions of northern Tensaw parishes as this line of storms continues to push off towards the east here. I'm going to show classic reflectivity uh, from our Jackson radar here. Just kind of give you the scope of the, uh, the um, storms that we have. Again, this is actually not even the main line. This is actually being picked up in some of the discrete activity that's lots, forming out ahead of Lots of damage coming in now um, from uh, near Troop F uh, in eastern sections of Monroe. If you don't know where Troop F is, it's the exit past the mall. So you go with Pecanlin Mill, uh, Pecanlin Mall exit, and then you go to the Millhaven exit, which is th three or four miles east, and you go north uh, out there on, on, on um, the far east side of the parish. That is where we have also damage reported. That's also uh, the Swartz, Fairbanks, Rowan Road areas where we had a tornado debris signature earlier today. Uh, it's the same general area. So again, we're starting to get a lot more damage reports coming in. Um, uh, we, we can confirm damage at Lazar Park in West Monroe. Uh, we have a crew on the scene there. Uh, so again, a lot of this will continue to flood in as we head through the rest of the afternoon. So yeah, and we will be sure to keep those reports updated as uh, we continue to get them at this time. So good news is at least storms taking a break here in the Twin Cities. This will allow officials to start cleaning up some of the damage that is coming into our area here. And as still kind of the main area of storms that we're watching here. Now largely though pushing into Mississippi, but we still got a line of uh, scattered storms uh, even along and, uh, or along and south of I-20 here. Some discrete stuff trying to get going, but keep in mind this will be into Mississippi uh, over the next probably hour or so but again uh, active tornado warning still continues at this time for portions of East Carroll Parish and uh, again this is set to expire let's see uh, at 1 15 so it will expire here probably about 20 minutes or so and then uh, they will likely trim it back though as uh, the at least the imminent threat to East Carroll Parish continues to push off towards the east but we're going to continue to watch the areas uh, south of it as well especially through the day as uh, the instability is still there, especially south of this line for that potential for pretty much everything that we've seen today. So again, just keep that in mind, especially folks in the Tensaw, down into Catahoula, Concordia parishes, you folks need to be keeping an eye out on this line as it continues to work at least closer into your area. All right, to recap what we've got going on, uh, this line of uh semi-severe, non-severe thunderstorms. Uh, our tornado warning has been allowed to move east and it has now crossed that circulation has crossed the Mississippi River and uh, is essentially out of our area. Still watching some of this uh, more discreet activity, but it'll be crossing the Mississippi River soon. And then still watching the southwestern flank of these storms. Uh, the, the severe weather threat is a little bit more limited back here to the south and west from Tallulah southwestward, but still maybe some damaging wind potential. And there's still a very isolated tornado threat in these areas as well. Back out to the west, we still have a lot of uh, additional isolated development out over the Arc Latex region. Hail not completely out of the question with some of those storms later this afternoon. The atmosphere remains fairly favorable for some development, but uh, these storms themselves probably worked over our atmosphere quite a bit and will also limit the tornado potential for the rest of the day. That won't drop it to zero, but it will limit it. Again, cannot stress this enough, that severe, that tornado warm storm has now moved east of the Mississippi River. While this tornado warning remains in effect for East Carroll Parish, it will likely be trimmed away shortly, likely at the top of the hour. Now, as the tornado warnings themselves have been allowed to be canceled or expired across the Arklamis, and the immediate severe threat has moved eastward, we're going to send you back to your regularly scheduled programming. Again, rest assured that if new tornado warnings are needed or if widespread damaging winds warrant the, uh, the needing uh, of us getting back on air, we will and we'll keep you updated with anything as it develops through the rest of the afternoon. Of course, for damage recaps and for the latest forecast, Brian will be joining you on NBC 10 News at 5 and 10 tonight. You can join us there for a full recap of the damage reports that we've experienced so far across the region. We have crews out and about across the entire Arklamis region, uh, specifically uh, into Washtenaw Parish where we've had a lot of damage reports so far and there are a lot of areas that are out of power. So again, cannot stress this enough, while this leading line has now moved east of the Mississippi River and our severe weather threat is a little bit more limited, 
We still need to keep an eye out for scattered severe storms later this afternoon into the early evening. Main threat there would be hail and maybe some high winds with the strongest of storms. That threat still a little uncertain considering all of the activity we've seen so far today. And again, cannot stress this enough, a full recap of our damage reports and everything that we've seen tonight on NBC 10 News at 5 and 10. And uh, again, we'll keep you updated with any additional developments as they progress through the rest of the afternoon. Stay tuned to NBC 10 and Fox 14. Have a happy and safe Easter.